Yo, what is going on, everybody? It is Roush, and it's been a long time since I've gotten to really do that intro. Uh, I haven't done any, like, sort of pre-recorded videos or uh, recorded videos. In the last year, um, obviously, we had some uh, some draft league content uh, for the, a little bit at the beginning of last year, uh, but... As, as usual i i tend to like st that stuff like wears me down trying to do the draft league commentary so anyway this is this is the first time of me doing a, a a post recording of um pretty much anything in the last year and the last time that i did a post comms of a speed run it uh, was actually featured in the um well a little cameo in the summoning salt lego star wars speed run uh history video so it has been a lot longer. I think it's been actually almost six years since that run. That's a cool fact. So anyway, uh, this is the world record Emerald Baton Pass speedrun. If you want to watch the version that does not have commentary, link will be in the description. Anyways, let's go ahead and start watching the video because it is four hours long. So, first of all, we're going to go ahead and talk about Here we go. what is Baton Pass. So, uh, Baton Pass means you're not allowed using the same Pokemon for every boss battle. So, uh, we, de we describe each boss as each gym leader, elite four member, and champion. Because if you decide to do it for every Aqua and Magma, uh, admin, and... Um, leader <laughs> that stuff would get complicated really quickly and uh quite frankly it would be more annoying than uh it already is because uh i may have gone overboard in a few places i am i made a note uh <laughs> i made a note in the the discord the gen 1 through 3 speedrunning discord when i posted this PB, I said, uh, yeah, I may have gone overboard in a few places, because I did. Anyways, uh, the very first Pokemon that we're going to get, as you can see on screen, once again, beautiful layout provided by Red Hair Jake. And, uh, yeah, so... Oops, what am I doing with my life? Uh... We're just going to go ahead and go through the intro cutscene a little bit, and then, uh, you know, just traditional beginning of the game stuff. There's not really too much to talk about. Uh, we've basically gone over the premise of the run. There's not too much to worry about as we go through here. Um, actually, yes, there is, because uh, <laughs> something that's going to come into play a little bit later is the step count. <laughs> So, in, in Gen 3, you have breeding, and uh, every 128 steps, the game checks to see if you have an egg. This is also used in uh, the calculation of friendship. Every two quote-unquote egg steps, your, uh, your egg will... Uh, The game checks to see if you have an egg in your... In the daycare. There we go. Sorry, I had to fix something on the layout really quick. So, uh, the step counter is going to come into play later, and I'll talk about it as we go along. So, for now, I'm just going to be doing the traditional Pokemon Emerald and counterless manip. So basically, the very first input from the main menu screen helps to juggle our Zigzagoon encounter. The second input, right before we select Mudkip, helps to juggle our Mudkip stats, which I am looking for very good stats. It's a uh, naughty 20... Th uh, is it 20? It's like 21 HP, 23 attack... 28 defense, uh, 30 special attack, 29 special defense, 
and 30th Street, something like that. I, I can't believe I don't remember that off the top of my head. But anyway, <clears throat> so then the last input that I'm doing is to close the Professor Birch text. So then I look at the uh, at his assistant on the right. So based on the assistant's movement and this blue-shirted guy's movement, I have determined the optimal path that I can take through the grass in order to get an encounterless to rival one. Uh, trying to extend it further is kind of ridiculous because it involves a bunch of frame-perfect inputs and late or not missing or having uh, Trico do anything stupid in this fight and then being able to carry it all the way through not only your Pokeball collection cutscene in uh, Professor Birch's lab but also getting your running shoes from your mom and uh, quite frankly that that would be very very exhausting it possible theoretically but uh, it, it <laughs> at some point in time you're gonna be going into uh, arguments of is this a task or not just because there's there's so many variables that go into it so you would have like an extremely long extremely extremely long series of bleeps which for your viewing pleasure i have gone ahead and made sure that they were muted for the duration of this run so anyway, pretty decent rival one. I mean, it wasn't super, super fast, but I did take an extra two steps. So like I said, step counter is going to come into play in this speed run. Unfortunately, uh, it ended up mattering. <laughs> Oops. Because and I'll, I'll go ahead and talk. I'll talk about that when uh, when we get to the, the next minute, because it'll matter a lot more. Anyways, we're still just going to go through the intro sequence. We're collecting our Pokemon. We're going to get our starter set of Pokeballs. And, uh, I can't remember, but I think I... I'm, I, 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 <laughs> I know I only did this run two days ago, but I already forgot some of the finer details. But I believe I use them all. <laughs> As opposed to like using better balls, like the great ball and the ultra ball, etc. But I just remember my inventory had <laughs> there, there. There are some complications that are, that arose at different parts of the run based on Pokeball collection. So, but assume that for now we are in a good position. We have Pokeballs. Oh, I bought there. I didn't know that. <laughs> Also, I, I was like listening to music during uh, this, this session. Fun fact: so I was, I had, or I had already done an attempt earlier in the day on stream. It went really awful, and Red Hair Jake told me he was like, "Dude, you need to just, you need to take a day off from this run." And uh, so I took like the evening off, did some homework, did some reading watch some hockey and then decided to just prep my offsets for the next day because I wanted to do runs the next day ie yesterday and uh, at the end of it all I just decided eh, screw it we'll just do one more attempt to make sure that my offsets were good and uh, yeah so this is this is the result of that I think I started this run at like midnight 03 so very, very tired Roush is playing this game. So, I would like that to be duly noted. <laughs> because of one or more things that occurred. So anyway, one of the things that I'm keeping track of is the number of encounters that I get in the um, opening sequence. Because your step counter does not increment <laughs> on a tile in which... Uh, an event occurs. An event being like a trainer battle, a Pokenav phone call, or a wild encounter. Which means you can sort of arbitrarily extend repel, uh, repels by fighting trainers. <laughs> kind of an interesting 
thing, but um, just a, a, a fun fact. So I'm I need to make sure that my step counter is at a very specific port uh, part because of how I accidentally designed the shroomish minute because I wanted to make it so that it saved as much time as possible, at least in, in terms of potential. So, it, it's like a catch-22. I mean, it makes the manip, like, sort of better. It saves time optimally, but if I fail it once or twice, like, the, uh, the time loss kind of starts racking up. Because the shroomish that I'm looking to get is rather late. Uh, it is on frame 2121, so it's 2,121 frames, or RNG frames if you will, that's not how long it is in real time, after a soft reset. I think after a soft reset it ends up in like the 1900 frames. I can't remember off the top of my head. But, uh, so basically, I am, I've kept track of the number of encounters that I've had on the first uh, the first three routes because I need to take extra steps before saving on my shroomish manip according to the number of encounters I have already gotten because again I need to align my step counter in such a way that my egg step my 128 counter rolls over at a very specific portion uh, in order for me to uh, capitalize on um, NPC movement because NPC movement also affects RNG also the when I say step counter affects RNG uh, basically is I take extra steps there on accident but it ends up not mattering um, when your step counter rolls over when your egg step rolls over the game in, like advances the RNG seed by the or the frame the frame number that it skips is the number of pokemon you have in your party <laughs> so kind of weird but that's how it goes so this one i fail this one i got i this one i failed and i i tried to do some arbitrary thing and it, it just it did not work out i <laughs> don't know what I was doing but uh, I believe I get it second try and uh, this is much more akin to what I was expecting um I like did an extra like I ran on a tile that I wasn't supposed to on accident and um, I had no clue where I was so I, I just tried to do some random movement to see if I could get it and naturally I didn't but uh, this one should be the correct one yeah so I'm looking at all the NPCs and they're doing certain movement. Now this bug catcher, unfortunately, once upon a time I had a version of the Manip in which the bug catcher was looking away. And I've actually got it on console once. And I haven't figured out where the offsets were that got me that. <laughs> Otherwise, I would try and do that every time because uh, then I wouldn't have to wait for him to turn away in order for me to do this menu. Because I do need to heal my Mudkip up to full to play it safer for the Aqua Pooch fight and also to um, get my Repel up so I don't run into any more encounters. Because uh, once I have my Shroomish, there's nothing else in the forest that really catches my fancy that I need. Slack off is, is not fun and the Wurmple line is just pathetic awful in terms of stats. So it's not really useful for a Baton Pass speedrun. Although they are fine enough in a casual playthrough. So, um, yeah, so Shroomish, clear and obvious, we're going to use for the Roxanne fight because uh, this particular one is more defensive than offensive. Um, it has 31 HP, 15 defense IVs, uh, 25 special attacks. So it's got decent special attack, but 8 speed. I kind of wish that the speed was better because uh, I would at the least love to have a speed tie with Roxanne's first Geodude, but uh, 
let's just say it, it doesn't work out that way. Anyways, lucky Aqua Pooch fight. Four turns. That was really cool. Second try, Shroomish and uh, Shroomish Manip. So this is actually about a average to better than average split so far. Um, also lacks nature on the Shroomish, so that's plus defense minus special defense. There's absolutely nothing is hitting me with the special attacks in this split. So the special defense is absolutely useless. But the 8 speed kind of hampers me for one of the Geodudes. But uh, it's fine. It's not amazing, but it's fine. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the TM for Bullet Seed. Because in the, the way that the, the damage formula is programmed, Bullet Seed will always be doing more than Absorb. Even though it is a 10 base power move as opposed to 20. Extra movement steps there. It ends up mattering a lot. Uh, but basically, Bullet Seed... Bullet Seed is a really useful stab move for Roxanne's Gym because I can potentially get off a lot of damage. In fact, four hits of... Uh, four hits of Absorb do more than Mudkip's Tackle. I mean, not Tackle, Water Gun. <laughs> Speaking of which, Tackle. This fight was ridiculous because normally this fight, you don't want to fight it. It's bad. Uh, the Lotad is not normally one shot by the combination of Mudkip and Shroomish. And CDOT, as you can see, tanked a crit tackle very easily. So normally this fight is like stupid long and I hate it. But I got really lucky this time. You want to avoid Gina and Mia. G Gina and Mia at all costs. It's a terrible fight. But unfortunately, there is no way for me to catch Shroomish and avoid their fight in a way that saves any meaningful time over simply fighting them. It's unfortunate. Um, I could save steps by not fighting Tommy first, but instead fighting um, the other youngster first. But um, this this way is safer. I don't need to use an extra potion on Mudkip. And um, it saves one turn because I'm already at level nine entering Roxanne's gym because of the, uh, the double fight, the Gian and Mia fight. So it is better for me to go ahead and just take on Tommy first here. Also, aside from the fact that Tommy's Geodude actually has three moves. It's Tackle, Defense, Curl, and Mud Sport. As opposed to um, the other youngster. Why do I... I always forget his name. Uh, who only has Tackle. So that's why you would need to potion Mudkip up during that sequence. So... Mudkip is going to be the main for Watson's gym because of its excellent groundwater typing. Or rather, Marsh Tom, I should say. Uh, but in order to defeat Rival 2, I want to give Marsh Tom as much EXP as possible. So, Marsh Tom, or Mudkip, is going to be the one to fight all the gym trainers. And Shroomish is literally only going to be used against Roxanne. Because somehow it works out that it's fine enough doing that on its own. <laughs> kind of an interesting, um, an interesting thing. So yeah, uh, Mudkip's just gonna be soloing the gym trainers to get as much EXP as possible because they're really quick fights. Considering, like once you get Water Gun, everything else is one shot. So you really only have the the one trainer that it takes any longer, and. Um, Shroomish's EXP kind of er, comes out fine enough in the Roxanne fight that I can play the fight safer. Probably longer than than you could do, but um, I've I use strats in order to maximize like completion rate as opposed to just going for the theoretical fastest speed. In certain segments, and I'll go over those when we get to them. <clears throat> so, we're gonna go ahead and move Shroomish up to the front. Because it's a low level and is outsped by the first Geodude, 
I like to equip an Orenberry so I have extra free heals. And I also need to, uh, as I mentioned, teach Bullet Seed. Because that's going to be the move that we're using the most for, for this sequence. I go ahead and save because uh, it's been a absolutely bonkers good Roxanne split so far. And uh, I don't want to lose this pace. Because it is very likely that I die here. Actually, I don't know if it's very likely that I die here. I don't even know if I have died to Roxanne in these baton pass attempts yet. It's going to happen eventually if I keep going. It, you know. Whether that's Gambler's Fallacy or not. So anyway, Geodude can Defense Curl or Rock Throw. I haven't seen it Rock Tomb. I don't think it will Rock Tomb just because my speed is already higher. Or my speed is already lower. So Roxanne's AI has no reason to lower my speed. Over using the much more accurate Rock Throw. So my Orenberry does pop because I'm at less than half HP. That's fine. Uh, it just makes sure that I am not in range to faint to a Nose Pass uh, Rock Tomb. Because Nose Pass is Harden, Block, um, Tackle, and Rock Tomb. I'm going to go ahead and teach Leech Seed. And this is the part where I'm talking about playing it safe in terms of the potential fastest optimal strategy. The Leech Seed recover me, Recovery pretty much enables um, me to tank nose pass tackles and heal them up for a length of time that I can avoid getting knocked into rock tomb range because because I am slower than nose pass Roxanne will not use rock tomb unless it unless her AI tracks that it'll kill whether that is in terms of a critical hit or otherwise. Uh, so this is kind of a, a troll sequence. I get unlucky with my number of um, bullet seed hits and the critical because I get knocked or I knock nose pass into Orenberry into potion healing range and then I proceed to get some really bad um, well low count bullet seed rolls. I think this is another two or three, and it just barely lives. Yeah, so Nose Pass is not going to faint to my um, lead seed here, and Roxanne's going to use her other potion. So, unfortunately, we do activate all of her healing items, and I think Nose Pass even lives this sequence? No, it does not. Okay, cool. Alright, I couldn't remember how that went. Oh, wow, that was two crits. Shoot. So, a very good Roxanne split, not exactly a gold, uh, as we are going to gain two levels on Shroomish that do not matter. We're done. This is the last time you will see Shroomish do anything in this run. It's just going to get boxed immediately. And, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good Roxanne split. I think, yeah, I go to check to see if that was my best Roxanne split ever. And it wasn't, but it wasn't by much. It's just a very good sequence. So... Um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and switch back to Mudkit Marsh Top for the um, foreseeable future for the next, like, I don't know, it's like 35 minutes or so. I can do math. But first, so when I, when I was talking about all those extra steps, this is the sequence that they matter the most. That is reverse chain it. Wow, that was another bonk. So many bonks in this run. Man, I played badly. It's fine. So yeah, uh, going to go ahead and set up for Reverse Chain Minute. That is catching Talo into Abra. And the step counter is uh, you basically don't want to have the egg step for the entirety of the sequence. But unfortunately, because I took the extra... I took an extra, like, I don't know, six steps <laughs> that more than I should have in this run and uh it ends up mattering <laughs> i cannot do reverse chain minute and i learned it rather quickly <laughs> so have to do this other thing called improvising <laughs> i'm like 
I have no clue what I'm doing. So, obviously I failed the first try. And, uh, yeah, so... This is not good, because every time I fail it, it loses... I think it actually... if um, Since I failed it at the very end of the sequence, I lose... I believe it's 44 seconds, maybe? So that's not great. I think it was 44 seconds. It might have been more. Also, uh, Shroomish's cry is longer than Mudkip's. So it forces me to have to menu a lot faster, a lot more precisely, than if I had Mudkip in the top slot. So sometimes, uh, depending on where my menu is, I've moved Mudkip back to the top spot before the sequence. And uh, I accidentally fluked my way into Jeffrey. <laughs> So, I don't I don't know if that's an actual NPC movement that normally grants Jeffrey, but anyway, I caught Jeffrey, and yes, Jeffrey is a female Abra. Blame Amoeba. That's not my fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did end up fluking my way, I believe, into a successful reverse chain manip, despite me believing that my step counter was in fact off. So I have to wait for youngster Johnson to turn, because. Down below, uh, Hiker uh, Clark, Hiker Clark, this is Clark, not Mark, Hiker Clark um, is a very quick one-shot and grants me a beautiful 247 EXP. So that's going to help make up for the fact that uh, this Mudkip did not fight Roxanne. Oh, 147? I thought it was stupid. I'm stupid. Anyway, 147 EXP. It matters. So, uh, Clark, nice quick fight. And we're going to go ahead and move on to Devin. And continue on kind of like you would in a normal any percent run. In fact, in my notes, I even say um, basically rival two through through Watson like, like glitchless. Because at some point, I'm actually catching my EXP up to where it would be in a normal 80% glitchless run. I fight an extra. So we fight Gina Mia, we fight Clark, that's extra, and I fight two other trainers. And, it'll, and it basically gets me back close. I think it's like, actually it might even be higher EXP than uh, glitchless, but it, it, it's like by like 20 or something it's it's very very comparable it works uh so anyway unlike going into tunnel grunt at level 15 i am at level 14 which means not even a torrent boosted water gun is gonna ko this pooch 100 percent of the time so it, i mean i more than likely am just gonna have to take two hits luckily we get how we don't have any sand attack shenanigans Sand Attack is my least favorite move in the history of Pokemon. I I hate accuracy drops. They always seem to go against me. <laughs> I feel like I tend to be unlucky as opposed to not. So anyway, all right, we have the Devon Goods. Gonna go ahead and return them. You know, just basic normal story stuff. Not too much to talk about for now. So there's nothing funky to see here. Just normal, any percent, glitchless, emerald routing. This is a sequence I need to work on. I know there's a way to just pause Karen, but I don't know. I just haven't felt confident with it. Oh, yeah, I fight Jose. <laughs> so, Buck Catcher Jose, um, very quick, three turn fight. Uh, grants a good amount of EXP, not amazing, but it's really easy. There's not a lot that, can, excuse me, not a lot that can go wrong because Ninkata is always one shot and Warple is always two shot at at worst. Worst it can do is like poison you, but uh, I'm at high enough HP that Crit Poison, Poison Sting is not going to be doing enough to take me down before I get my free heal. Right here. So, doesn't matter. The amount of e uh, the amount of power points that we've used, the amount of HP that we've lost, you get it all back. 
it's fine. Okay, next set, I'm uh, gonna go ahead and I used to grab cut here and um, cut gives me access to an extra two rare candies, but uh, through extensive testing and routing, I figured out a way to go ahead and completely skip cut. That is probably like a two minute time save almost because I have to gather, I have to get cut, I have to teach cut, I have to use cut. I mean, maybe it's not that long. Maybe it's not two minutes, but it saves at least a minute. <laughs> it saves at least a minute. Um, but as opposed to that normal stop, I do a Petalberg shop instead of a Rustboro shop. Uh, grab this potion just because I like having extra healing items. I pick up a bunch of extra items in this run. I, I guess the next optimization that I could do is figure out exactly how many items I will need and be a little more precise with um, with my spending habits. I, I guess I, I, I didn't make the item route as exact as I should have, I guess. So as a result, I haven't narrowed everything down as much. Um, I could definitely do a lot better with that, but it's fine. Hi, Dad. Bye, Dad. Bonk. Bonk. <laughs> Interesting watching this this run on afterwards because I don't know how many places that I bogged because again I was listening to music as I was playing I was like I was trying to stay awake I wasn't I guess as focused on the run as I could have slash should have been but it's fine escape rope out and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of things extraneous from the glitchless route just because Stardust, worth a thousand Pokeblocks, will come into play. And, uh, like I said, I need just a little more EXP to get caught back up to the any percent uh, glitchless EXP route. Trust me, it saves time in the long run. And Ned is a really quick two-turn fight. 
unless you get unlucky. So Tentacool here is a speed tie, unless I'm level 15. Can't do that unless I get extra EXP from somewhere. But luckily we make it a two turn fight anyway, because Supersonic Miss into Speed Tie Loss into Supersonic Confusion. Don't hit yourself. A lot going on there, I know. But basically, we come out on top. Uh, I could tackle, but I don't like tackling because tackle can miss, and I hate missing. So I just go with a bonk. Mud slap route. For safety reasons. Grab a revive, for safety reasons, because there's a bunch of battles that I can, that I can faint to, and I don't want to have to unnecessarily reset, or unnecessarily save, because saving wastes a lot of time. <laughs> um, yeah, a few seconds. I'm going to go ahead and equip the soft sand here, because if you know anything about the glitchless route, soft sand increase the power of ground type moves by about 0.10. I say about because the way the damage calculator works, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less than exactly 10%. Uh, again, just depends on level. And uh, level is a very important part of the damage formula and should not be understated. I will bring that up again later. <laughs> because, again, to iterate, level matters a lot in the damage calculator. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so... I say damage calculator, I meant formula. Same difference. Normal any percent, glitchless. Actually, I guess it's even any percent at this point, too. Any percent still treats these aqua grunts the same. Nice crit tackle on this Carvana. I can't remember. Do I win? This is also a speed tie. I like lost all of these speed ties. It doesn't. It doesn't matter that much. We came out on top anyway. Uh, I hate getting bite. I don't like getting flinched. That's one of the reasons why I have the revive, is because you can very easily lose to that fight. I say easily, but bite, flinch, crits, you know, they're, they're not common. They're pretty rare, but when they happen, they hurt. Um, do, 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 do. Teach Mudshot. Mudshot's a good move. It can miss, though. I don't, I don't like that part. But other than that, it's a good move. Speed lowering is a definite bonus. So, um, if I'm in Torrent, and I don't like being in Torrent because this Zubat can supersonic me. If I'm in Torrent, I can Water Gun times 2 the Zubat, but because I'm not in Torrent, Tackle is the most likely way to two-shot. And I get a very favorable damage roll in turn 1. And Mud Shot 1 shots Carvana. Again, Soft Sand boosted, Stab. It's good. Also, Carvana has some of the worst defenses in history. I believe... I think they're like 20 or 25 apiece. <laughs> it's got some HP, but it's got extremely low defenses. Sharpedo only has 40 base defenses, and that's the evolved form. <laughs> so, Carvana, very easy to one-shot. Free heal here. And uh, we're going to go on to Route 110. Now, uh, this is actually a new change that I implemented pretty much right before this run. Like, the day before I did this run. I, I did this in the attempt earlier in the day. Um, but I basically switched out 
I switched out a future Pokemon, and it forced me into catching an early Oddish. Oddish is a very powerful Pokemon in this run because of its um, because of the move Sweet Scent. So Oddish is going to become sort of like <laughs> Oddish is a is going to become more or less a god of this run <laughs> because it enables me to capture Pokemon that I wouldn't otherwise be able to because not every frame has um not every frame can produce a wild encounter so what oddish and its move sweet scent can do is catch or is activate encounters on any rng frame so it basically broadens the potential uh, stat distributions in terms of individual values that we can use over the course of the run and unfortunately uh i did this rather hastily so i was only able to find like um a frame perfect oddish encounter and unfortunately i didn't exactly optimize the catch the yolo ball minute <laughs> so i unfortunately am gonna have to lose almost all of my marsh tom's hp in capturing this oddish it's fine i have extra potions like i said i i stockpiled a bunch of potions for a reason so yeah got ourselves some weed uh give it a one um letter nickname because it's gonna be using it a lot and i have my offsets calibrated for a singular um letter single character oddish nickname because uh it takes an extra frame to display any character of text so it would mess with my sweet scent manips having any other number of characters as the oddish nickname so anyways back to normal any percent glitchless route shenanigans Oh, I forgot. I messed. Up. I messed up trying to grab the full heal there. I go ahead and save because Rival Two is a fight that I lose to way more often than I like, and kind of a good thing. Excuse me. Kind of a good thing that I did that too because uh, I mess up. What did I do? Oh, <laughs> oh, this is the worst thing that I've ever done. I can't believe I 
did that. My brain just like turned off. I went into, um, yeah, I, my brain told me I was fighting a different fight. <laughs> that was awful. Never want to do that again. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that cost me like, what, 20 seconds maybe? It's fine. Still on a pretty decent pace. So something you might be noticing is I'm not comparing to my PB splits at this point in time. And one of the reasons is because of the routing differences. I like comparing to balance because it kind of gives me a better idea of where I am in the run at any given point in time as opposed to like going off of my PB because this is a very volatile run. <laughs> Like, you could lose a lot of time in one segment, but yet gain it all back in the other. It just depends on how good uh, you are at hitting the manips, because a lot of them are frame perfect. Um, Mudkip is frame perfect, like, you know, just the... The stat manip of it. Oddish, as I mentioned, is frame perfect. Overall, it is... One, two, three... Four, five, five, is that? Yeah, five. Six, seven, eight. Eight. Yeah, eight frame perfect stat generation minutes. Which is <laughs> seven sweet cents. Seven of the more sweet cent minutes. So yeah, like I said, because because sweet cent allows me to be more precise about what Pokemon I can hit, it, they do end up being like more or less frame perfect every time, almost every time. But it allows me to. Um, save a ton of time in fights and uh, as i mentioned well earlier in the run allows me to skip two rare candies that i normally would have picked up in a previous iteration um mainly because uh, there's yeah there's a couple things that i can do now that i was incapable of before excuse me Oof. it's fine all right, so again, normal 80% glitchless stuff. Teach Rock Smash. I need Rock Smash. Uh, luckily, I didn't faint to the Abra. If the Abra crit high rolled, I think I was in range of, of fainting. I think it can do up to... I, I can't remember if it does 5 or 6 max. I can't remember. I, I'm tired. Anyways, uh, DeAndre, nice and easy fight. I'm in Torrent, Water Gun kills everything. And we'll go ahead and heal up Marsh Tom because I'm tired of listening to this Bidoof sound playing in my ear. Getting ahead of myself.
Alright, now, uh, party manipulation. Deposit Shroomish, deposit Taylor. I don't need Fly for a while, and quite frankly, I don't need Taylor for a while. And there are three slots in my party that I would rather be filled by other members. So we'll go ahead and deposit them now. Get the nice damage roll on Ben Ziggs again. No reason to save before Watson, because like the fight is... You can lose, potentially, but it is very, 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 very unlikely for you to do so. And a lot of it has to do with how I set um, Marsh Tom up. So, um, the X attack is optional you can easily win the fight without it. The X speed is much more important. So if Voltor self-destructs turn one and like crits and faints Marsh Tomp, that's why I use the X attack first um, because I have the spare revive so I can easily bring in another Pokemon to, um, to heal up basically. And to revive Marshamp, bring it back in, and then set up the X speed on something else. Because outspeeding the Magneton is worlds more important than potentially one shotting the Manectric. And that's basically what the X attack is used for. Marshamp EXP doesn't matter once you hit the Watson fight. This is the last, like, the last battle battle that Marshamp participates in, so you don't need to worry about its EXP like you would in the Glitchless run. Just something to note. The fight is uh, a lot more. Uh, I mean, fluid it doesn't matter as much. Pretty good, pretty good split so far. Like saving time on every segment to balance at this point is uh, it's giving me a lot of hope. Uh, I think I've second tried every manip except for Mudkip to this point. Yeah, I second tried Reverse Chain, I second tried Shroomish, second tried Oddish. And of course the first try, first try Mudkip. So yeah, so far so good. Now, uh, I catch Oddish early because of the next minute that I'm going to do, which is Meryl Nip. Um, what I used to do in the run was go for a regular old wild encounter and uh, do a series of movements that allowed me to have a two-frame level 15 Meryl. However, because of the glory that is um, Sweet Scent, I am able to find an adequate replacement that's at level 16 
and that helps a ton. Remember when I said that level matters in the damage calculator? Uh, this also has better defenses, or at least better defense, I should say, because this is a naughty Meryl, as opposed to my previous one, which was a lonely Meryl. So this one has 20 HP EVs, 14 attack, so it's got worse attack than the lonely that I used to use. But, it's one level higher, has 15 more special attack IVs, which actually translates to two more special attack at level 16, which makes a world of difference for almost every fight coming up here. Uh, 20 special defense EVs and 27 speed. So it's got good speed, um, okay attack, and very decent, very passable special attack for what I need it to do, because I'm only water gunning things that are quad weak. Anyway, so um, when I do my... I notice how I went and checked the Pokemon menu before uh, moving past the spinners there. Reason for doing that is because there's actually two level 16 Merrells on like two consecutive frames. And I'm checking my HP stat to make sure that it's 51. Because the one frame early, Meryl has 53 HP. And it does not have huge power, like this one does. It is an impish nature, unlike this one. So it is practically unusable for our intents and purposes. Alright, so... Next big shopping trip. I need a bunch of items, and in fact, um, if I do a reroute, I would definitely change how many items I buy here, because turns out uh, I keep buying extra. I don't need everything. Sell double team, sell rock tomb, stealthy, sell stealing. Keep shockwave, because that's going to be important later. I need great balls. Great balls. Don't buy too many. You only have so much money. Super potions. Super repels. I buy an extra super repel here. Kind of on purpose, but um, I've since routed it out. I don't. I don't need that extra one. Three X attacks, four X speeds, three X specials. That's gonna come into play because I want to buy only as much as I need because I need to have money for um, a little later. We'll get to that when we get to it. Dig, nice move. Um, top 100 moves of all time. I mean, it, 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 it kind of sucks, but it's important enough. So, notice how I hadn't swapped Meryl to the front before, and the reason why is because repels only repel encounters that are lower than your level. So, if I still had Meryl at the front of the party, anything that was level 16 and above, I could still run into. Um, fun fact, if I had, I believe it's three, extra special attack EVs, this Geodude becomes a damage roll. And it's in my favor. It's like an 83% damage roll. Or 81. Something like that. It, it doesn't matter. But um, my defenses are good enough that even a Geodude Magnitude 10 uh, won't knock out H here. And the Numa only has Growl Tackle and Ember. So it, it's not doing a whole lot of damage to me. So that's one case where the special attack and the level extra level and the extra special attack come in handy because no that numal was a damage roll <laughs> to two shot like it was a potential three shot <laughs> which obviously makes the fight longer so already the reroute Meryl putting in nice work
Bonk, bonk. Pell wears out at a really cool tile. <laughs> and uh, I actually got Knob. Knob? Is that Knob? I think that's Knob. Uh, to spin a really funny time. So I just go ahead and pass him on the opposite side as opposed to going down like you would normally. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the EXP share. Uh, if you've seen this run before, you'll know what it's for. If not, I'll explain it when we get there. It's kind of important. I mean, it's not as important. Like, I could route it out. But it's honestly faster to just grab it than the alternative. <laughs> Maybe. Might not be. I'm not sure. But I think it's a cool strat, nonetheless. Wow! I forgot how bad my movement is in this. Well, you can really tell that I'm tired. Alright, and now that we're through encounters that um, I need Marsh Top in front of my party for, Meryl is gonna stay at the top. Just guaranteeing that I pass by spinners. I flubbed movement so badly in this run. It's fine. Receive the strength, because strength is a very nice move. We're going to teach it immediately, because it's that good of a move. I need to pick up a couple of items on the other side of this, um, on the other side of this cave, so I am going to fight the extra trainer to do so. And it, I mean, it's kind of, it's useful. It's a five turn fight. And it actually gives me enough EXP to evolve. So Meryl's leveling curve is a fast curve. It levels incredibly quickly. I'm actually... Con I've, I've considered using uh, Azu alt main. Trying to route an Azu alt main. Maybe I'll do that someday. It sounds like fun. This Pokemon could have some, some, interesting, uh, some interesting strats. Probably first and foremost is uh, very common, is the defense curl rollout strat that we're going to be using for the next couple of sequences, because, uh, spoiler alert, we're using lower level Pokemon. <laughs> we need any competitive advantage that we could possibly get. I love my defenses. My defenses are so good. <laughs> Freaking defense stat on this is, is like, insane. <laughs> Just being able to casually shrug off the low kicks and everything. Ugh, it's super nice. So, in previous iterations of the run, I needed to fight an extra encounter in somewhere. And I typically did it here in Ruster Tunnel. And then fight the first Aqua Grunt in Meryl before getting to evolve to Zoom Room. Which meant so many more, like, potential ways to, to, to faint. Don't have to worry about that as much with uh, with an Aussie with the, this good of defenses. So again, just another reason that the reroute came in handy. Oh, terrible movement again. So this is a very fun, um, very fun reroute. Came in very handy. Now, uh, there's one item that I could not purchase in Full Arbor Town that I really need, and that is the X Accuracy. I can pick them up here. I now have enough money to purchase them all. So I do it now as opposed to earlier for that reason. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use another Super Repel here. It'll carry me up to Mount Chimney. And, uh, yeah, my reroute is, like... <laughs> Looking really, really strong. Because <laughs> I didn't need to catch 
Oddish in this split. And, um... Oh my gosh, my movement's so bad! No! Oh, I got bailed out! Lucky! Yikes! I, I'm, in, I'm embarrassed, to be honest. But it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'm getting lucky. I'm not running into trainers yet. Spoiler alert. Um, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Now, the unfortunate thing is I actually don't, like, because I don't have as much attack as the other, the Lonely Meryl, the Zubat is a damage roll, I think. Actually, I don't remember off the top of my head, but because I'm actually fighting that Zubat at the same level, regardless of the reroute, but, um, it's fine. Everything else um, up here on Mount Chimney remains the same. Like, I don't one-shot anything extra. But uh, mainly for the the earlier two fights, the... Um, oh my goodness. The Hiker... Hiker Mike and the Hiker... Lucas. Lucas. There we go. That's the other guy. Is where the uh, reroute comes in handy. I don't know, maybe that Poochian is a damage roll, but I don't think it was. I don't remember off the top of my head whether it was or not. I don't think it was. That Zubat crit was nice. Um, potential um, supersonic confusion hacks evaded. It's fine. Looking pretty good right now as we get ready to fight Maxi proper. I uh, still have the full heal intact, so even if Numel had burned me, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and heal Meryl up to full. I can't remember. Do I actually use the Orenberry? I don't. Okay. So I used to use the Orenberry for this fight. But it turns out to really not matter that much, and it just wastes time. Uh, because I have to do this sequence in a certain order anyway. Um, and it basically... Maxi kept using, uh, kept chewing up my Orenberry like, earlier than I wanted him to. But it's fine, because I'm going into this fight with a higher level than usual. So I have more HP and more... Well, not more special or special defense, but more HP. I'm able to tank bites fine enough, <laughs> as is without um, without the Orenberry's help. So the first thing that obviously I want to do: go ahead and tank the Intimidate and set up a guard spec as Jeffrey faints to a bite, and we'll go ahead and bring out. A zoom roll and we're gonna go for the rollout defense curl strat so the first thing that I'm gonna do set up an axe accuracy don't want rollout missing uh, that would be bad then I'm gonna set up an X speed and that's to ensure that I outspeed everything now I go for a defense curl because defense curl if used at any point directly before attacking with rollout so like I can do all this healing stuff. Which I'm actually getting really lucky with sand attacks. I forgot how lucky I, I got with them. Um, so my defense curl is stored. Which means the base power of my first rollout is going to be double its normal thing. So normally it starts at 30 base power and then doubles each turn. But 
Now it gets to start basically at the second tier of rollout. So it starts at 60 base power. The second one is 120. The third does uh, is a 240 base power move. And then um, 480. And it caps off at 960. <laughs> 960 base power as the final rollout. And it is a sight to behold. Uh, but basically, uh, Maxi gets demolished from here. I've considered taking a look and seeing if um, because of my reroute, I can get away with uh, X attack into strengths. But I, I haven't I haven't looked too deeply. Maybe um, X attack X attack strength strength maybe. But I'm not sure. I don't know. Things for later. So anyway, a gold, like an absolute gold maxi split. And uh, we're moving on to Flannery. Um, I do want a wild encounter, but it's not a Machop. That's not the one I need. I need a Spoink. So first things first, I got to go ahead and swap Jeffrey out of the top spot. Because Jeffrey has synchronized, which messes with my encounters. <laughs> I... Do not want Jeffrey in the top spot because synchronize 50% uh, of the time it'll rearrange or it'll take the um, the nature of the wild Pokemon of a wild Pokemon and change it to its own. So Jeffrey is a bold nature, which is a good nature for Spoink to be honest in this run, but uh, it also shuffles what frame the IVs are generated on and as such changes the battle RNG <laughs> including yellow balls <laughs> so having Jeffrey in the top spot actually ruins Spoink Manip. so uh was that second or third try I, I wasn't paying any attention I failed it at least once but it's fine because uh we go ahead and get the spoink on the um, second or third try, whichever one this is, which is fine. Um, I don't know which frame I hit. I either hit a relaxed or a gentle natured one. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't remember. I could check based on the HP 61. I don't I think that's actually relaxed. I think I got the relaxed one. Um, but as long as my special attack is above a certain point um it makes spoink usable spoink isn't too like strict on the um on the ivs that it needs to complete its task it's used for one fight and it's the highest level thing in that fight so it, the stats don't matter nearly as much so anyway all right flannery fight once again we're going to be using the tried and true defense core rollout bullshit Nice and easy. Not too much to see here. Because of my extra defense and extra level, um, get to have a a like easier time, but yet a slower fight. <laughs> Guaranteed. And I'll explain that once we get to it because uh, something happens that causes this to be slower than... Um, my level 15 Azumarill in most circumstances. No, we defense curl turn one. This, man, I'm playing like trash. My menuing and my decision making is wrong. I am. I'm getting bailed out by battles, to be honest. Because I don't think. Uh, I'm not playing too well at all. Anyways, uh don't need to really set up this magnitude 9 it does nothing i'm like so proud if this was my lonely azumarill at level 21 that would have done like over half <laughs> so as it stands numo only gets one hit off on me after setting up sunny day which is kind of slow but it's fine um but the flaring fight's over <laughs> it's once once i get that 
second hit off on Numel, like the fight's gone. It's it's over. So it's so it's it's really funny. It is so much safer. It is a little slower, but it is safer than um, Marsh Tom <laughs> Flannery. It, it's it's kind of amusing, really. But unfortunately, it doesn't really work out so well um, if you're trying to do trying to do the strats in any percent glitch this run. Do lose a little bit of time here to balance, but again, that was because of um, Spoink fail. I lose about 20 seconds for each Spoink and counter fail, and then an extra few seconds because of my uh, blunder going into the menu instead of defense curling right away. And then another, what else did I blunder? I blundered something else too. Oh, I got the Machop encounter. That lost me about, I think it was about 10 and a half seconds. Anyways, uh, we have one more stop before Brawly. Uh, we need a Pokemon to help us defeat Norman. And um, my Pokemon of choice is another rollout user. And the highest level one that I can find right now is Sandshrew. So Sandshrew is... It's a pretty okay Pokemon. It's got decent. I think it's base 100 attack, base 120 defense. So it's 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 okay bulky. It's not uber uber bulky because I think it only has 65 special defense. But because it's Norman that we're fighting, um, defense matters more than special defense. So it's nice. Uh, I buy a very few energy powders for some reason. I thought I bought more. Um, then buy 13 energy roots because energy roots are super useful later on in the run. And then a bunch of heal powders because stuff can happen. And I don't like it when stuff happens. Uh, grab a nugget because all the money that uh, I can get right now is important. Now, I need to have my repel. I need to have a repel inactive, which means I do have to yellow through this patch of grass. Uh, I have a bike. Bike actually reduces encounter chance by one third, I think. It's either one third or one quarter, I can't remember. And I'm trying to get the Mirage Tower to spawn because that is where I can find the highest level sand trues. I can get a level 24 sand true here uh, as opposed to anywhere else. And um, normally I've made this a walking encounter. This time, I decided we'll make this, we'll, we'll try the Sweet Scent Encounter, because, uh... Well, my Sand Slash, my, the frame for my Sand Slash is the exact frame as another Pokemon that I'm going to catch later. And so, um... Oh yeah, I, I run from that Sandshrew because there are two types of battle intros. You have one kind of intro if the Pokemon that you're fighting is lower level than you, and a slower animation if it's the same level or a higher the wild Pokemon is the same level or a higher level. So I'm looking for that battle animation, a boom, a level 24 female Sandshrew, this is exactly what I'm looking for. But yeah, this is, my Sandshrew frame is the same frame as another Pokemon. So, um, the Minip's the same. So there's my Sandshrew. Nice and easy, second try. Frame perfect, again. Give it a nice little one, one letter nickname, and then we skeet out a little addle. Now, a little bit of setup for the next couple of splits. First of all, I want the soft sand. I don't need it on Marsh Top. Second, I need Spoink at the top part of my party.
Now, uh... I need to teach rollout. I need to teach rollout. Sandshrew doesn't have rollout. So, use the move tutor. Go ahead and teach it. The only move in its arsenal that I really care to keep right now is defense curl. This defense curl rollout, as we talked about, is a busted combo. Uh, I need to go ahead and... I, I forgot to do this when I first teleported, but I no longer need a zoom roll in my party, and I really want that party slot freed up for... Um, after the Norman split. For my next big main. Gonna need to teach uh, Dig and Strength to Sandshrew because Dig is a move. It's a move. It does damage. It's fine. Uh, strength is another good move. It does damage and is an overworld. Is an overworld move. It's fine. And eventually uh, we're gonna teach Rock Smash, but right now I need I need uh, Defense Curl and roll out my move slot. Super Repel up. Don't want any more encounters. And go ahead and evolve the Sand Shrew to Sand Slash. Pretty good. Not much to talk about heading back to Brawley from here on out. I probably could have dealt with Timmy here a little better. But go ahead and give the soft sand to Sancho. It matters for one fight, but it's enough that it matters. Light screen is the worst thing that Metatite can do to me, but I mean, the Makuhita, it, it 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 doesn't really do anything. I mean, it's it can arm thrust and waste time, but it doesn't do nearly enough damage to Spoink that I don't out damage it. So it's a little bit of a time loss here, but in the end, it doesn't even matter because that's all the damage Makuhita gets to do to me. Light screen wears out now, and then I guarantee one shot. So normally, Spoink would one-shot the Makuhita, but again, light screen is the only thing preventing that from happening. Nifty little time save. Not a gold split, but a nifty little time save. Norman. I have tried almost any type of sequence on Norman. The Norman fight itself is fine enough. It's again defense curl rollout. But the tra the trainers leading up to him are a huge pain in the butt. 
I have tried every combination <clears throat> before settling on this sequence going through. Um, we just need to swap scene slash to the front. I don't think there was anything else menuing wise I needed to do. But anyway, so you have uh, speed room versus healing, or sorry, accuracy room. I.e., uh, Randall versus Mary, or Swallow versus Del Caddy. Then <clears throat> the next three, you have Confusion Room, Defense Room, Healing Room. And then the third sequence, you have to choose between either the. Um, <clears throat> Zangus or Vigroth. Do you want to get swords danced on or do you want to get focus energy critted? So the first room that I've chosen is Randall, uh, the Swallow Room, because uh, it doesn't do any damage to me. I used to use Mary because I thought the healing room was better. But I have since changed my way of thinking. The healing room is super slow. And um, I also have the potential to mess up or just simply get countered. <laughs> and uh, yeah, George is a bit of a dick when it comes to that. So he can heal and like, it, it takes a lot for me to one shot him. So slack off, threw that out. So I'm instead going with Randall and Alexia here, the defense curl room, if you will. Um, I don't know why I menued over the Orenberry. That was weird. Hmm. Maybe Orenberry wouldn't be a bad strat. Anyways, um, once again, I go into my menu, even though I wanted to defense curl turn one. Do I go for two defense curls? I can't remember. I went for two defense curls to actually just boost my defense. No, I didn't. Okay, cool. Uh, that's fun. Set up an axe accuracy so that my rollouts do more. And that double edge did a lot. So I think I'm just healing. Oh, I'm just going to heal until she defense curls again, which she does immediately. So it's fine. Uh, eventually, I will be out damaging her defense curls with my um, continuously being boosted to absurd levels of power rollout as Alexia continues to go for defense curl and that's fine enough for me because I don't want to put her in heal range she's not a heal range yet so this this rollout will go ahead and take out the weekly tough and that's cool so I've only used one healing item well two I healed off of Randall so heal off of Randall heal off of Alexia and I'm going into Burke at full health. So i chosen to do the one-hit KO room because Burke has a cap as to how much damage he can do, as opposed to the uh, the Zangoose, which can just sword dance to oblivion. And uh, yeah, it's kind of difficult to win once it starts snowballing itself. So Vigoroth has a definite amount of damage that it can do to me. And uh, I can play this battle in a way that I can never lose. <laughs> I have more than enough healing items. So I wait for Burke to not crit me, and then I will go for Dig. So I can continuously stall until Burke gets a non-crit slash, and then be guaranteed to live. So I guarantee live a non-crit slash into a, a crit slash. So that's why this is the safest way possible. Um, switch dig to the top slot in my um, in my menu, so that way when it comes to doing overworld stuff, I'm guaranteed. Well, I mean it's easier menuing. It's easier menuing when I go to dig out of caves because uh, I didn't buy any escape ropes, and I don't plan on buying escape ropes because my inventory gets too cluttered anyway. It takes a lot of menuing to get over to it. This is just it's a probably slower overall, but I don't care. That would take a, enough rerouting and some more like item management that I don't care to do. Uh, heal up to full before Norman because 
Norman is a fight where a lot of things can go wrong, and um, it's not likely that I'll lose, but it is possible. Like, uh, the like s something has to go like really wrong. Like I need to get double crit or something by Vigoroth. So I mean, it's it's fine. Like I could probably not save before the fight. But I just do it because of the unknown. So, <laughs> if Spinda doesn't confuse me, like turn one, I can go ahead and start attacking with strength. Because it takes two strengths to KO the Spinda. So right now, I am just, I'm stalling until I'm not confused. I pretty much set up everything that I want besides a defense curl. But I don't want to set up the defense curl yet because I don't actually start rolling out until we get to the Vigoroth. So I'm going to two-shot the Spinda with strength first and then start like defense curl rolling out on Vigoroth. But Spinda is just going ham with the teeter dances right now. I I am like, how many heal powders have I used? So that's five. <laughs> and then I get it. Oh, I forgot. I got yet another Psybeam Confusion. Oh, I, I, man. What a fight. What a spin. What a job. Uh, six heal powders used on this fight. And finally, I'm able to go ahead and take out the spin. So I've set up a speed and an accuracy. So I'm faster than Norman's entire team. And uh, I'm not missing rollouts. Go for defense curl. Heal up to full because I have to spend three turns face to face with this Vigoroth. And faint attack doesn't do as much as normal. That's interesting. Slash does a decent amount of damage. Second rollout puts it in range of healing. I get crit. But it's fine, because we're faster than everything, and we're in, we're in kill mode. So that'll be the Norman fight. Just roll out my way to victory. Oops. So... When I said... My Sandshrew encounter was the exact same frame as one of my other encounters. What I didn't take into account is the fact that that encounter has trainers loaded. <laughs> which actually affects low to RNG. So, me getting crit by the Vigoroth there ensured that the Lanoon was going to kill me. The sand, the sand Shrew that I aim for is Rash Nature, with 23 speed, EV, or speed IVs. The Sand Slash that is currently in front of you is a Quiet Nature. <laughs> it is slow. <laughs> it, it does not outspeed Lanoon at plus one, but luckily it does outspeed... Um, slacking at plus one. It's this weird range in between where it's faster than everything that the other one would outspeed except for the Lanoon. And I only realized that after the run. <laughs> but luckily, like, I get pretty lucky in the, um, in the second run of the Norman fight. Like, I use, like, one heal powder? Did I use one heal powder? And, um, basically all I'm doing is, like, playing and praying that Vigoroth doesn't crit me, so that I have the potential to live, um, a Linoon crit. I think, I think I still live a Linoon crit, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Well, we'll see right now. Linoon goes for Slash. Oh no, I wouldn't live a crit at all. Never mind. Yeah, so a Slash crit would, would faint me at that point. But it doesn't matter. We outspeed it. We're fine. 
level 27, we're able to outspeed the slacking, and finish up the fight. So, bizarre sequence, <laughs> based on a uh, miscalc on my part. So, this sand slash is, I think it's four. Four frames later, something like that. Then, um, the frame that I wanted to hit. And I did that because I was using the offsets from an encounter that had trainers loaded, and the sand shrew doesn't have trainers loaded. So that was that was a fallacy on my part, and a split second decision that I made mid run, that ended up costing me what, like uh, two and a half minutes, <laughs> literal minutes. So yeah, that wasn't that wasn't great. Um, didn't make the encounter any more or less likely. And I will not be making that same mistake in the future. Uh, I'm probably going to keep Sandshrew as a Sweet Scent Minute. Because either or, it still is frame perfect. But um, it doesn't involve me like having step count problems. Sweet Scent like, guarantees that I don't have to worry about step counter. Because I can Sweet Scent from a standstill. So, if uh, when I do this run again, and spoiler alert, I haven't hit my goal yet, so I do plan on doing more runs. Um, we're just gonna keep playing as is. No reason to change anything. An unfortunate Marilyn counter. It's fine. This is the few tiles that I don't have a repel active for. So! We need to go ahead and catch the Pelipper. And the Pelipper is the Pokemon that's actually the same frame as the Sand Slash. So I was using the Pelipper offsets to try and catch a Sand Slash, uh, neglecting the fact that the frames are like, the Sweet Scent frame is different between the two. And now we know that it's by about three or four. Cool. So I am. I'm. Not gonna lie, I'm tired. Uh, this is still a really good pace run. I'm not gonna give it up, but I sort of am rattled to the point where I'm not as confident in my minip, especially the yellow ball minip. So, let me see, is this tentacle? I think I failed this minip first try. Yeah, so this is a frame early. This level 31 tentacle is one frame early from what I want. And each Pelipper Minip fail is 25 seconds for an encounter fail. And um, 45 seconds, no, 40, yeah, 45 seconds for a Yellow Ball fail. So bear that in mind. couple of frames late. <laughs> but I do have a chance to get a second yellow ball attempt off. In fact, I think I even get a third attempt. Do I reset here or do I try one more time? I do. Okay, so I do I do try the, the one more time. Just because like I said, I wasn't feeling confident. Pelper's catch rate is abysmal, by the way. <laughs> It's not great. It's pretty bad. I think with a great ball at full health, it's still like 9% catch. It's 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 a palm's catch rate. <laughs> it's a palm's catch rate, but I can't influence it like I can in the Safari zone. So I have to just go off of frames. So I fail the Pelipper encounter again. Once again, Tentacool is one frame early. And because it's a higher level than the Sand Slash, it has the longer animation, so I can't, like, reset based off of animation.
early. Oh, I faint here. And I'm like, uh, I can't do any damage to it. So I think, do I actually try? I guess I do. I don't know why I did. I'm just wasting time. Oh, I'm just gonna try and yellow it. Yeah, and then I, I, I just basically I'm like, all right, and then this is not working. It, it'll just be better for me if I just go ahead and reset the encounter. So we're already at, what, three and a half minutes time lost to this Pelipper so far. Not great. <laughs> not, not great. Um, yeah, it's just something that I'm going to have to work on. But it's fine, because we got it this time. <laughs> so, yeah, we lost about four minutes. About four minutes. To this Pelipper encounter. But it's fine. We're still in a really good position. Um, we're just going to play along with it. Go ahead and retrieve the soft sand from Sand Slash, because I'm going to want it on another Pokemon later. Um, oh yeah, the reason why encounter manips are so difficult uh, after you get the Pokenef is after the 10th step, you have a random chance of receiving a Pokenef phone call after you've received the Pokenef. This happens regardless of dry battery or fresh battery. So the reason why most people use dry battery in their any percent glitchless attempts is because if you don't reset at any point after receiving the Pokenev, if you don't save and reset, you're guaranteed to not have any Pokenev phone calls. So it's better. Um, yeah, it's better for that category. But for this one, um, it doesn't matter. And in case I have to like reset a battle, I have the or I use I have two cards, a fresh battery and a dry battery. So I use the fresh battery cart for this run because of potential of fainting means I can get a couple of seconds faster resets. Uh, it doesn't matter as much for encounter manips. I don't think there's any that are fast enough that you can't do with a dry battery. More bad movement, but it's mock bike in very tight corridors. What do you expect? Actually, zero encounters to uh, like from Pelipper to abandoned ship is actually pretty lucky, because um, there are tentacles that are level thirty and above that you have the potential of running into with your um, Repel Active. They're not common, but they are out there. So we're going to go ahead and get our movesets ready. <laughs> Fun fact, I... <laughs> my brain... <laughs> we'll talk about it when I get there. So Ice Beam and Shockwave are just fantastic coverage options. Surf is a really fantastic stab option. And I'm going to need to teach Rock Smash to Sand Slash because... Marsh Tomp is leaving the party and is never coming back because they're just there's no reason to use it again and I need Sand Slash for the future because it has Dig because Dig was really important for um, work. Dig with the Soft Sand was the only way that I could two shot it with two X attacks. So I mean I guess I could have potentially on 3x attacks but strengths but I'm not sure if that's better or not maybe it is questions for later regardless we're going at it oh yeah I 
don't have surf. I didn't teach surf. <laughs> I didn't teach surf yet! <laughs> Would have been hilarious if I had already dropped Marsh Tomp out of my party. And I looked over and went to try and surf and it wouldn't. But it didn't happen. That's fine. <laughs> Just a little silly thing that I accidentally didn't do. By the way, I still haven't noticed. As I'm playing the run, I still hadn't noticed that... Um, that I hadn't taught Surf yet. I can't remember when I figure it out. I don't remember when I figured it out. We'll, we'll learn together. <laughs> Just a sort of little haha -ha moment. Bad movement <laughs> leads to an encounter. It's fine. More bonk, bonk, bonk. Bonk, wow. <laughs> Man, I am just, this was an off day for your boy. This, yeah, okay, this was when I realized it. My brain was like, wait a second. <laughs> Surf does not have 35 power points. <laughs> I should probably teach Surf. There we go. Much better. I mean, it's not that it matters too much, because I can Ice Beam the Poochiena and then either Shockwave or Ice Beam the other Zubat. But Surf is just faster because it's neutral on both targets and is a significantly shorter attack name than the other two. In other words, it's fine. Okay, so the Shelly fight, um, I don't, I don't kill Mighty Anna in one shot, unless critical. So potential to get bite, bitten, potential to get, um, swaggered, potential to miss swagger. But I am faster, so I can't get flinched, so there's that.
All right, so this is where Marsh Top leaves the party. Don't need it anymore. I want to have extra slots in my party for um, this next sequence. So goodbye to um, Spoink as well. Cast Form is a useless little piece of crap. The only thing it's good for in this run is giving me a Mystic Water. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're still bleeding a lot of time from the, uh, the Pelipper shenanigans. Like I said, it lost me almost four minutes. So it's not great. But this fight is pretty consistent. And very short. Well, not very short, but it is short. It's short enough. Uh, X speed to outspeed the uh, Grovile. X spec to one shot the Grovile. Wow. Shocker. And also to set up this, or also to one shot this very amnesia, this very forgetful Slugma, if you will. Now, because of how the AI works, uh, Pelipper is going to get sent out before um, Grovile because of not defensive typing, but uh, offenses. Like, uh, Brendan doesn't have anything super effective to hit Pelipper with, with any of his Pokemon besides Slugma. So, uh, he'll just send him out in his quote unquote standard order something that uh, is amusing in future sequences. So yeah, lost about three and a half minutes to potential gold here on uh, this rival three split. It's, it's, er, it's fine. Hi, Scott. What happened? Once again, I'm having trouble with making inputs. Trying to hop on the bike has been a bit of a struggle in this run for me. Seven Ultra Balls is probably overkill, actually. It is overkill. Because if I don't catch something, I don't catch it. Well, besides my Niana, but... I think that comes into play. Can't remember. Hi, Kecleon. Bye, Kecleon. That'll be the last time we see you. Well, sort of. We have to use the Geffen Scope and one more. But it doesn't activate a battle, at least. I mean, not that Kecleon, Kecleon doesn't really matter in terms of, like, battle. You just run from it and just waste time. So I do have to run through here without a, um, without a thing, without a repel active. But luckily, I don't get any encounters. <laughs> I save here. So Pelipper actually also has an overworld ability that affects encounters, specifically natures. So it also juggles. Well, no, 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 no. Pelipper, Pelipper's keen eye prevents like wild and like 50% chance for a wild encounter that is four levels below its level.
to just not appear. Which again, like shuffles like RNG frame that um, encounters are, or not encounters, but PID and hence IVs are generated on. So yeah, I can't have Pelipper in the top slot, but I can have Oddish, which is unfortunate because Oddish is not a great mod. Um. Yeah, that's not... I'm looking for Absol. Because Absol is in, incredibly nice and, and, and useful for the rest of this run. It is a 2 out of 3 frame encounter. So, it wasn't worth it for me to do a Sweet Scent Manip for it. Because I could get just as good an encounter. More likely. That's the frame in between my two frames. Twice. Which I I, <clears throat> I believe means that my offset is correct, and I'm being very precise. I'm not one frame early, one frame late. Because I think I intentionally set my offset to be the, the frame in between. Might change that in the future. But anyway, we get it now. So this is what, third try Absol? It's not too bad. Oh! Wow, okay, so I was having Yellow Ball trouble everywhere. Man. Wow. Huh. Was I early? I think I was early on that yellow ball. I guess that made me early. But yeah, Absol has an incredibly low catch rate as well. I think it's actually lower than Pelipper. So, um, need to make sure that I get the Yellow Ball, otherwise it's like no shot at catching it. So yeah, there we go. There is my naive and not careful Absol. Definitely didn't make the mistake this time. Uh, careful would be the Absol that I would get if I messed up, or the, if I if Pelipper is at the top slot of my party, which is not optimal. Uh, but unfortunately, because I don't have Pelipper at the top slot of my party. Uh, I have more chances to run into encounters. And luckily, this Meryl was lower level than, than Oddish, but I still need Oddish at the top slot of my party for um, one more encounter because we do need to catch a Mighty Enna. So I'm going to position myself in a specific point so that the trainer on the left, the Hex Maniac, or Bug Maniac, is despawned and that. Um, Jessica, Beauty Jessica, is facing a certain direction, and that should enable me to get this next manip off, because I want a Mighty Anna. Specifically, I want a Mighty Anna that'll live a Claydol Earthquake. <laughs> Specifically, two Claydol Earthquakes when it's at minus two. Which makes it, it makes the Tate and Liza fight much much easier. And we fail the first one. Oh yeah, I think I had a miscalibration here, and I can't remember what what I did wrong. But I think I think this was just this was wrong. That's right. Oh, I didn't go back. And this was the one. This was the one minute that I wanted to fix, 
but I forgot to do before starting this run. Yeah, so I need to go back and, and double check this one. So I, I think I still got it. I think I still got my intended encounter, but I think I failed to catch. So this is two frames in a row where I have a Mightyena that gets the job done, that lives. This one is naive nature. And then there's uh, one frame earlier from this is a level 26 Mightyena with a relaxed nature that also gets the job done. So yeah, I filled my yellow ball. Um, I wanted to go ahead and, and redo this encounter. So Oddish faints as a result, but um, as long as I don't get roared, I should be fine. I can't remember what happens. Okay, I do catch it. I, I couldn't remember if I got roared in this run or not. I think the previous attempt, I had, like failed and got roared and caught something that I wasn't aiming for. But now I want Pelipper back in the top slot. We have an active repel. I'm trying to remember, because I was like, there's something else that I need to do, and I can't remember what it was. I can't remember, it wasn't important. Because um, I had the repel active, and I remembered that I had the repel active, but I couldn't remember if there was something else that they needed or not. Spoiler alert, there was. But it's fine, I think I remembered in time. more botched movement so I play the safe strats making sure that I can pass those trainers guaranteed for those of you who don't know um, spinners get locked for a set number of frames uh, after you um, activate an event so they're stuck and in fact it also matters the same huh if you um open your bag so we call it we call it bag minute but it's it's not actually minute it just is bag freeze i don't know i don't know what you'd call it it doesn't matter so uh i do need to retrieve some more money items and also the tm for shadow ball so it's unfortunate that i have to fight two trainers on my way up there. The first trainer is free. The second trainer is not free. Oh yeah, I also need to take on a Wild Shepard, so it helps my Pelipper EXP. Just assume that it, it has a purpose. So now I need to reset my repel. So I do so a little early, admittedly, because I have to wait for the Hex Maniac to spin anyway. I don't I don't know what I was doing. I was I was tired. My reflexes in decision making weren't sound. Hariyama, however, is a problem because it has a move called Whirlwind. Ugh. If I get whirlwinded out, it just Ugh. I lose the XP. <laughs> So I now need to find another way to get more EXP on Pelipper to get back to where I want to be. Do I get Whirlwinded again? Yes, I do. <laughs> and I get Whirlwinded into Absol. So the entire team who's not fainted besides Abra has been sent out. <laughs> so everybody got there got their cracks in this Hariyama so as a result Pelipper lost 900 potential EXP <laughs> which is not insignificant but luckily I I already I had an uh, I had a backup ahead of time I got kind of lucky with these spinners in here um, the first pass when I first walk into the room is pretty much guaranteed because the amount of time it takes for me to walk one tile and then open my menu is fast enough that um, they're guaranteed to have not spun, but I got lucky that the second pass, both spinners were turned away from me at the exact moment. And then, 
set movement for those rotators. It allows me to retrieve Shadow Ball and both the C and Lax Incenses. Sorry, Lax and C Incenses. Because they're very useful for money. Because I need money. Stockpot and Swallow are terrible moves. In game and otherwise. Stockpile is a useful move, like, after Gen 3, but not before. <laughs> or, not during, I should say. That'll come into play later, too, by the way. Um, Shockwave for PowerPoint saving strats for this fight, because I don't want to use a Pokemon Center, and I only have the one Elixir. I could potentially pick up an, a, another healing item elsewhere, but it doesn't matter. I save more frames, excuse me. I save more frames this method than not. Alright, so now I have realized what I need to do, what I had forgotten. I need Absol in the second slot of my party, and I'm actually really glad that I decided to teach Shadow Ball first. And uh, this was sort of a, a routing strat that I came up with on the fly, because I wanted to um, save an extra Surf PowerPoint because of the other strat, my backup strat for my Hariyama fail, forgetting the fact that I had already saved one Surf by not using it on the Hariyama. So it ended up not even mattering. <laughs> In the end, it doesn't even matter. So yeah, I'm going to play this fight a little bit differently than I have in the past, but it's fine because it makes more sense. So I Ice Beam the Puchiana and Shadow Ball the Whalmer, which uh, that does a ton to the point where it faints. Um, crit mattered. Otherwise, I would just Shadow Ball or Bite. And it would still finish it off. So, what I want to do now is I want to Shadow Ball the Zubat, and I can't remember if it guarantees a faint or not. And then I want it to, um, yeah, okay, so it doesn't guarantee the faint. But, um, faint the Carvana here. So that, oh yeah, that that's that's why the Whalmer crit was kind of bad, because Zubat could potentially do uh, supersonic shenanigans. But anyways, another Shadow Ball, we'll take out the Zubat. Shadow Ball power points don't matter as much because I'm going to have to heal them off at some point anyways. Um, and I do that via... Um, do I do it via box? I don't think I do it via box. I probably ought to, come to think of it. Because it's really the only Pokemon that I need healed from here on out. Like, straight up healed. And I do a lot of box manipulating. Maybe I don't... Maybe I should do it differently. Hmm, interesting. Anyways, uh, Mount Pyre Rare Candy, and we will go ahead and teleport our butts out of here. And we'll go on to Winona. We lost a little bit of time due to um, Hariyama shenanigans and a little bit more time due to um, third try or fourth try, Absol? It was third try, Absol. And then third try Mightyena. 
Third try Mighty Anna or second try Mighty Anna? Actually, I think that was second try Mighty Anna. Hmm. Dang. Why do I feel like I've lost so much time in this split? The battles weren't even bad. Well, actually, I guess the Hariyama battle was pretty bad. Hmm. Interesting. It's three minutes away from completing the split, and I'm three battles behind four. Well, three. So, yeah, this is my backup strat. The Skarmory, like, can't do anything. I don't even remember if it has Whirlwind, but I have Keen Eyes, so my accuracy can't be lowered, and it doesn't matter anyway because I have Shockwave. Um, agility, Swift, Sand Attack. I think it has Fury Attack, so Fury Attack just wastes time. It doesn't do enough damage to me. So yeah, now all of my EXP is made up from the fact that I didn't do Hariyama, or Hariyama gave me fits. So this is, uh, this is a fun battle. It helps to have Absol here, not gonna lie, uh, because it allows me, excuse me, whew, it allows me to do different strats. This is faster than the any percent fight, but potentially not either. Uh, Doduo. Bite. As long as Swellow doesn't double team, like, Swellow's guaranteed to faint, because I can't miss Ice Beam. And Ice Beam is a guaranteed one shot. I have, like, three extra Ice Beams at this point, so I'm not even worried. Dodo of Flinch is obviously incredible. Uh, I can Surf, because that guaranteed faints Doduo. And Shadow Ball guarantees, or doesn't guarantee faint Zatu. So, Surf will guarantee the both Zatu and Doduo go down on this turn. So that's really cool. So we're two turns in, and we're through three Pokemon. And all that's left to do is to take care of their Pelipper. Which, um, you know, I think I one-shot I one shot with uh, Shockwave, but just for extra measure, I go ahead and whip up a Whirlwind because it's faster than hitting into a protecting Pelipper. And boom. Oh yeah, Pelipper's now faster. Even though, um, so, naive Absol, as opposed to careful. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm behind, like, the full Winona to gold. Behind the full Winona fight to gold. Yeah, I guess that was just Hariyama being a thing. And the fact that I didn't get my Mighty Anna Yellow Ball. So. But I mean, it's overall not a bad split. This is not a bad Winona time. Like, I mean, it is in the grand scheme of things, but it's not at the same time. It still is the best Winona, like, it's still a best split time. It's not a gold split, but it is the best split time. Really simple fight, Ice Beam, Ice Beam. Set up an X spec and an X speed to guarantee faint and outspeed the Altaria. And then Shockwave, Surf, Ice Beam. To finish up. An okay split. Oh yeah, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but Winona's AI loves to try and, like, supersonic Pelipper. She, like, never does it on the Marsh Tomp version of the fight. But, for whatever reason, Pelipper is just fair game for confusion hacks. Also, Skarmory is a damage roll. 
but I mean, like, it can't do enough. <laughs> it's a very, very... Well, it's not very slight. I think it's 81. I think it's another 81.3% damage roll. Or 83.1. It's one of the two. I can't remember which... My brain is not doing math right now. And then Altaria faints to one Ice Beam. I'm not gonna lie, watching this run back feels a lot slower than playing it. <laughs> oh, feels so much slower than playing it. I don't know how you guys in chat can could watch this, watch this live. You guys are like weird, crazy, I guess. Either that or I'm the one who's crazy for not finding as much entertainment and watching it back. There's my first spinner. My my first optional. Like I said, I've been playing like really badly and I've been getting away with it. So finally, I play badly and I don't get away with it. So just in case I didn't make up my Hariyama EXP before, which actually this fight. Hmm. Would this fight have just made it up anyways? No, I wouldn't have need to do the Skarm. Might have made up enough, because I th I have, like, a bunch of EXP extra. I'd have to do the math. If I get if I get Whirlwinded out, and I still get half of the Hariyama EXP, do I even need an extra fight? Hmm. That's something to calc. Very interesting thought. Anyways, unlucky on this run. We don't get any Hiker, Picnicker, um, Camper. Does camper spawn or is it just hiker and picnicker? I can't remember. Um, I'm tired. Anyways, uh, we're gonna do some magma magma hideout. Do I have a repel active? No, I don't. Okay. Anyways, repel's active. I have one guard spec and one X spec remaining, and then after that, I need to buy some more X items. Yep, I failed that movement, so just play it the safe way around the magma grunts. Make sure that no more optionals, because all of a sudden my power points are becoming tight. <laughs> Speaking of tight power points, we're just going to go ahead and heal up all that. Wow, I haven't used a single energy root yet? Huh. Huh. 
I guess maybe I only used it on the 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 one the Norman fight that I failed that I lost. Interesting, huh? <laughs> I, I I hadn't noticed that. Interesting. Cool. That's fun. Once upon a time, before torrent strats, we would guard spec and X spec during the maxi fight. During the maxi 2 fight. Way back in the wonderful year of 2014. 2014. I can't remember if we had figured out how to get torrent consistently by 2015 or not. But anyway, that used to be the strat. That's where my brain's at right now. It's like, oh yeah, we used to, we used to guard spec X spec at this point. That was my big contribution was torrent strats for this section, and I figured out that you can one shot Matt too with torrent. So I was like, oh, that's fun, isn't it? So the key was trying to figure out how to keep torrent, and then some other people came in and made it a hell of a lot more consistent than I did. But anyway, just a little bit of history. Jeez, that's nine years ago. So yeah, we're going to go to 2014 strats here because Pelipper in a non-Torrent boosted state. Although Pelipper has higher special attack than um, Swampert does. Well, not base, it's like Tide. I think they're both 85. In this gen, in a later generation, Pelipper gets a glorious base 95, but not this one. But basically, because of my nature, my serfs are more powerful in their regular form. But obviously, Torrent is such a broken ability in terms of in game damages. It's funny how it's, well, just not as usable and competitive. Used to be. My brain always goes back to the old um, sub agility Bataya Berry Empoleon of Generation 4, and that was one of the things that made it so powerful was it essentially getting a plus two. Right. Actually, more than a plus two on its surfs or hydro pumps. I was never risky enough to do um, Hydro Pump. 
Uh, gonna go ahead and rare candy Pelipper here because it guarantees what used to be damage rolls on Matt. Both of Matt's Pokemon used to be damage rolls. And also, um, Declan. Declan, uh, Declan's Kyrados. You would be damage rolls if I didn't use those candies. So. I also would like to have higher level for the true double fight. So it, it, it's a, it's a win-win. Win. All right, so like I said, uh, we need Mightyena for the Tate and Liza fight. Because, uh, Intimidate. And the other Pokemon is going to be Sharpedo. So I was talking about how the defenses on um, Carvana are absolutely abysmal. <laughs> so Sharpedo, um, yeah, Sharpedo, I said, has is like base 70 HP and then base 40 on both defenses. So, yeah, we're getting offset tremendously by Mighty Anna's Intimidate. So we're going to be switching Mighty Anna in and out a lot. But first, we have to take care of the Aqua Hideout. And, uh, oh yeah, we need to go shopping. This little dickweed's in the way. We'll go ahead and just take care of him really quick. One shot everything, no boost needed. The only potential boost would be if um, I wanted to X speed to guaranteed outspeed Grovile, but Grovile does not do enough damage that not even a crit would one-shot Pelipper from this point. So, like, I didn't need to heal. I don't need to heal. We just go. Everything's a one-shot, and Grovile's the only thing that does damage from now until when I need to um, deposit Pelipper in order to make room in my party for the Tate and Liza fight participants. Because... Just in the same vein of the normal any percent glitchless, uh, I could use some extra uh, friends to sack off. So yeah, see that did like 30. So the max that Grovile, I think the max that Grovile can do is like 68 with a crit. I can't remember that off the top of my head. It was like 68 or 69. So 70 HP or above, I was good. Alright, so we have a lot of money items that we can sell. We have nuggets, zinc, and incenses. So we have a lot of money to work with. I also have a spare super repel. I don't know, like... This is, this is where I realize I have the extra super repel. I don't need it anymore. Uh, 31x attacks. 11x specs. I get 13x speeds because there's the potential that I need a bunch extra, but... Um, I think that one might be overkill, too. I think uh, 11 will get the job done. For some reason, like, I, like, froze. I was like, that menu felt way too quick. Did I forget something? So I was like just reconsulting to make sure I didn't forget anything. And then I will need one TM15 Hyper Beam. And yeah, I was like also confused because I had a metric ton of money left over. Forgetting that I had fought like an extra two trainers. So my dollar amount remaining was always going to be higher than projected.
So the Master Ball. Master Ball is something that I'm probably going to talk about a little bit later, but um, I will switch what Pokemon I use it on over the course of the run. Like, potentially. Because there's a Pokemon that I can't manipulate the capture for. Well, a couple. One of them is the Sharpedo, but the Sharpedo has like an a not great, but still usable catch rate. But there's another Pokemon that just blows it out of the water with how difficult it is to catch. So I will use the Master Ball if I need to catch that Pokemon. And I say if because I don't guarantee need it. Because I could just as easily find its pre-evolved form. I mean, if you've seen the run, if you've seen any notes at all, you know what it is, but... You know, I mean... I'm just gonna do that off the context that you don't know what's going on. Like, somebody out there is watching this who's never seen a run like this before. That's what I hope. Is someday somebody sees this video who's never seen this run before. So yeah, uh, I mean, everything in the Team Aqua base is, um, is one shot. I actually probably could have fought this fight as a double because of the uh, extra battles that I'd already done, and that would have saved me a little bit of time. Not a lot, but it would have saved me like, maybe a second. But it doesn't matter. And like I said, because of the, um, the EXP and the candies, I'm able to one-shot Matt's Pokemon. Otherwise, they would have been, like, damage rolls before. I mean, super favorable ones, but... It would have been annoying to miss one. That was where my brain was like, wait, I still have a super repel left over. But yeah, based on where my menu is, it probably would be better to just go with max repel. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and fix that in the notes. We only need 12 super repels. And um, like I said, we're unable to manip the capture of uh, Sharpedo, so I'm going to buy some netballs in order to much improve the chances. I think at like 50%, Sharpedo is um, it's like a 60% capture or something like that. It's like 59. So four netballs is like enough 
like 95% of the time. <laughs> Actually, it's higher than that. You know what? Let's let's look this up. Catch rate calculator, Sharpedo. 50% in a netball. Okay, actually it is 50%. But it's a 62 at 48%, 45%. No? Hmm. So, at 43% HP, no, at 42. Interesting. Cool. All right. Um. So, fishing minute. Uh, every time you have, I don't remember if the cast is anything or not, but every time you have to do an extra like a press for the nibbles, advances RNG. I got the worst sequence that you could get. <laughs> Immediate Pokemon's on the hook. <laughs> it's blind. <laughs> Essentially, like, I, I don't know how many frames off I can be, so I, I just have to guess. I have to... I, it's a four-frame window or five-frame window. I think it's a five-frame window for me to have a good Sharpedo encounter, but reeling it in that quickly absolutely wrecked this attempt so uh this is a much favor much more favorable uh spot for me to be so this is this should be a, a pretty easy uh grab so the more reels you have the more um or the rng advances every time you reel so i'm further ahead than i was on the other one and I believe, if I remember correctly, did I get the serious nature one in this one? I think I got serious. Either got serious or docile. But, yeah. The best nature Sharpedo that I could possibly get is, um, naive. The naive nature one is is the best because I actually only need to set up two X specs and no X speeds, as opposed to um, some of the other frames. There's a frame that I could potentially hit where I have to X speed and do three X X specs, so it, it's kind of it's rough. But that's another reason why having uh, a good defensive Mightyena. Or a good defense, Mightyena, is super useful. Because it allows me to get extra attacks off. So anyway, uh, Absol with Pressure makes it so 50% of the time, if you find a Wild Encounter, you will find it in its highest level. You will find it in its highest level. So the odds of me finding a level 35 Sharpedo are increased. So for my frame window, it actually increases from four potential frames that work in a row to five frames in a row that work, and it guarantees that the Naive actually needs fewer X specs, because the Naive is going to be level 35. So it's, it's, it's an interesting um, interaction, and Absol is also incredibly useful because it just one-shots pretty much everything in, in the gym, in terms of gym trainers. And EXP on Sharpedo and Mightyena do not matter at all. Also, none of the gym trainers have Pokemon that uh, have a secondary typing that resists Ghost, whereas uh, there's a Meta Titan here that resists, or that is neutral to Crunch and will live, and will one-shot with a high jump kick. So Absol is uh, Absol with Shadow Ball is a more consistent way of doing this gym anyway. It's very interesting that way. Pressure doesn't matter because, again, we're going to have to heal Absol's power points up later. Guaranteed, like, regardless of what happens. So we're just going to get B here, some extra EXP. 
so that she's in a position. But I do not want to use her in the Tate and Liza fight. Because that means she becomes ineligible for uh, any other of the gym leader fights. Which is why having an entire other party worth of potential sacks is super important. Because I want to decrease the likelihood that I have to resort to Absol. Wait a second. Huh. Am I being silly? Is that a thing? No. No, 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 no. Did I just think of something? Did I just ruin this? No. Huh. Oh, that's bad. That would be a step up, wouldn't it? But the question is, would I have enough money? I could potentially skip the Shadow Ball. Go ahead and revive the Oddish just for... Um, Oh my gosh, I didn't get the black glasses. Oh, no, 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 I didn't need to. Okay, that's right, that's right, I didn't need to, because I'm going to plus three anyway. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. Yeah. The black glasses really only matter with the naive, or if I miss all of my frames, and I hit the serious nature. Level 35, so I knew that I didn't need the black glasses. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I was, I almost froze. I was like, did I just play that wrong? All right, so I need three X specs, and then I outspeed Claydol. So yeah, three X specs is what I need. Maybe I am docile. Is this the docile? Interesting. But yeah, so now is where the energy roots start coming into play. Because I need to heal the Sharpedo back up to full continuously. Sacking Taylo is useful because it means that I have a guaranteed turn where Zatu is attacking and not using Calm Mines. Or Sunny Day. And we can tell that I hit my Mightyana based on how little damage that that, that that Earthquake did. I am so proud of this Mightyana. And in fact, we actually took... Yeah, we took less than half from um, Claydol Earthquake. And no, yeah, we, no, we took just over half that did 50. So, yeah, it's a, it's like a damage roll. Yeah, look at that! We have 13 health left on this Mightyana. That's so good. Um, do I bite? I guess I do bite. Do bite Zatu. To try and... get some form of damage. Zatu can't hit either of my Pokémon. It's only attack and move is Psychic. Um, 
Lunatone also can't hit either of my Pokemon. Soul Rock's the only thing that can do damage, like direct damage. They can confuse. Um, but Zatu won't use confusion unless it's like, typically unless it's the last Pokemon remaining. And it's like, I have no other option. I have to do this now. Forget how I played this end game. Okay, so I just kept biting. <laughs> Alright, now I go ahead and heal up the Sharpedo because I don't want to get, like, confused problemed. <laughs> yeah. Because I expected the Zatu. Like, I probably could have gone for Bite and it would have been just as fine. But I think Crunch Crunch kills. Does Crunch Crunch kill? No, it does not. So Bite Crunch, Bite Crunch will kill. So I have to just risk getting confused here. Which unfortunately, Sharpedo does. Hurts itself in confusion. But it's fine, because I have the bite off, and I don't believe that's in healing range either. So now Zatu's going to want to go for the Sunny Day, because its AI is stupid. And I'm able to uh, just take it out with one final crunch. Bit of a stally fight, as opposed to the Emerald variant, but um, it's safe. I could potentially, like, roar it out. I could potentially roar... Zatu out and get rid of all of its Calm Minds and bring in Lunatone and then play around with potential Hypnosis. I have considered doing that. Now I'm thinking of a reroute that skips Hariyama entirely. I'm not sure if that's better or not. I'd have to weigh the pros and cons. We'll see. I think it would mess with future battles. Plus, Absol is just so much more cool to use. I mean, I, I'd still need Absol, because pressure for Sharpedo is incredible. And also for the other Mon. So I still need Absol in the party. I I accidentally deposited the wrong Pokemon. I wanted to deposit um, something else, so I had to redeposit. Uh, go ahead and heal up here, because like I said, I need... Uh, Shadow Ball power points back. For the future fight. Yeah, if I could find a way to not need the instances, then maybe it would be faster to route out Absol as an attacking partner. But I don't know what I'd do instead. Facade? Facade or Strength? I guess that could potentially get the job done. Interesting thoughts. That would also skip the EXP share too. Huh. 
cried. The fact that Sableye actually learned Shadow Ball and level up. Well, no. Why am I ruining this? I was having fun. The fact that Sableye would naturally have Shadow Ball when I catch it means no candies would need to be used. I'm sad now. Hmm. There would be literally no advantage to using Absol. And I can't imagine that it wouldn't be hard to find, like, a multiple frame window that gets me a Sableye that can get me through Phoebe. Because Phoebe is guaranteed Protect City. Like, I can set up plus six on it for free. On her for free. That's disappointing now. I'm saddened. I mean, Absol is still incredibly important for pressure. But now that'd be all it's used for. Well, I mean, it still partners up with Pelipper for doubles. I just wouldn't teach it Shadow Ball, I'd teach it something else instead. I pr again, I'd probably teach it Strength. That might actually one-shot the... Is that one-shot Doduo? I don't think it would. Do more, though. Hmm. That's an interesting... I'd have to... You know what? We're gonna have to do a reroute on that. And see if that's any better. Because that, that would save the, what, like, 50-second detour for... EXP share. Plus the, I don't know, like, 20 seconds, maybe, of not actually having EXP share text. Plus, anyway, true double fight. <laughs> Uh, my plan is traditionally to set up to plus two special and then attack Maxi's Mightyena with Ice Beam. However, Steven's Metang decides every single run to throw me a loop. So I have to do things completely different than I really want them to be. Because Tabitha's Camerupt is less threatening to me than everything else on his team. <laughs> so I'd rather keep the camera up alive than not. However, I need Surf to KO Maxi's camera. <laughs> I can't KO it with an ice beam because camera up is bulkier than Mighty Anna. So I have to just Surf earlier than I want to. However, if Metang decides that it wants to be a bro and, like, attack, say, the Golbat, puts it in range for Surf to kill. However, like, th th this fight just goes off the rails immediately. Like, this is not the way I wanted it to end. But, I mean, so far it's working, right? It's just unfortunate that um, I have to Ice Beam... Crobat with a Mighty Anna also out on the field. This is just... Uh, this fight's crazy. I hate it. Uh, I have the potential to get swaggered. Also, Metang is a bit of an idiot. It saw that um, Psychic was going to kill Golbat, so it went for Psychic, and then I already took care of it. And I'd much rather do it myself than trying to trust Metang to take care of things. So yeah, now I'm slower than Mighty Anna. And that's the unfortunate part. Because Metang does not KO at Metal Claw. 
And I get swaggered. So now I have to, like, not hit myself in confusion to save time. And I think I do hit myself. Yeah, I hit myself. It was unfortunate. But it's also not really worth healing. Because I'm doing, like, zero damage. And Metang's gonna want to attack in a Mighty Anna next turn anyway. Metang's also faster. Metang has a chance to snap out of confusion. He has a chance to snap out of confusion. You know, it, it's just... There's a bunch of stuff. That fight is super volatile. It always is. Pelipper, Marsh Taunt, besides. Right. Boom. Fight over. The Archie fight is much more straightforward. Oh yeah, Sharpedo's still in my party because it learns Dive. That's the only reason why it's still around. In fact, I think it's the... Oh no, 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 no. No, it's not. No, it's not. I have like three other Pokemon. Two. Two other Pokemon that could potentially learn Dive. I guess facade would be facade or strength. Strength would be the better option. On absolute. Man, that's super disappointing. Because that would save a couple of minutes if I could get around the money problem. Because having those incenses is just incredible. Actually, what I could do. Because I have to buy the net balls anyway. And I pick up the other nugget in the aqua hideout. So I could potentially sell that nugget and just buy more X attacks in Lily Cove. I mean, Moss Deep, sorry. When I go to buy the net balls, that is a thing that I could do. And I could also potentially hold off on buying the max repels too. Because I could do that in the same menu. And then that would save time. Because I wouldn't go to that shop front. I would go immediately to the second floor. What the heck? Yeah. Oh. Man, I'm doing all this routing in my head, and, and it's making me disappointed. Because I really wanted to use Sharp, or really wanted to use Absol for the Phoebe fight, but I guess in hindsight, it's not as good. Dang it! Exus strikes again. <gasps> oh my controller! Oh yeah, my GBA died here, so I'm like switching out my GBA at this point. Oh man. I like walk through there because I'm like doing it with a with a GameCube controller that I had on the ground. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. So I forgot about that. So there's a little time loss there. Man. The Absol strategies. I'm sad. I'll have to do all the calcs to see. If Absol can still take care of um, Tate and Liza, I mean the the gym trainers, because I could also potentially like if I faint to um, if I faint to Meditite, then it doesn't matter because Sharpedo should be able to one shot Curlia with a crunch. Cause yeah, I should I could be able to set up my team earlier. Hmm. Well that's super bizarre. I'm already coming up with reroutes. Alright, anyways, Archie fight, like I said, is much more straightforward. X back X speed faint everything. 
thanks to a, an amazing coverage moveset. Bolt Beam combo is nutty, and then Surf. It's just... It's so good! It's such good coverage. So yeah, I mean, this run is still, like, very solid, but yeah, like, so that that was to my PB splits, and I was, like, a literal second behind at Maxi 2. So it was, like, I was right on pace with it, even after the tremendous time bleed that was Norman and Rival 3. Yeesh. I mean, Norman and Pelipper. So still, really, really, really solid pace. It's just that sub three is like slipping away. I mean, sub four, sub four, sub three is well gone. <laughs> sub four is slipping away. Oh, I run into an optional here. That's right, I run into that optional. Ugh, does she have a nav too? I think she had a nav. I mean, I one-shot both of her Pokemon, but it still is like incredibly disappointing to myself that I did it. I forgot how to do the movement of this section a long time ago. Like I'd have to, I'd have to, I need to go back and look at Mitsunee's maps. Like she did a fantastic job on them and haven't really used them. But anyway, I do need this rare candy because I think I'm down to two and I need a third. And it does not take long to go and get. So Shadow Ball's got 15 power points, right? Yeah, Shadow Ball has 15 power points. Man, I could totally do it with that. Shoot. I just need a, a good capture window.
Hmm. Actually, what I could also do is I can make them double battles. And do Sharpedo and Absol. Hmm. Hmm. And then that actually would put Mighty Anna in the left slot. Ha! <laughs> when I swap it in. Huh. Anyways. Sorry. Story stuff, this is really boring. Nothing. There's nothing interesting to talk about. I'm, I'm just musing about potential rerouting and bemoaning my loss of my favorite sequence. What's up, Dan Bronx? How are you? <laughs> I was also very disappointed. The last two runs that I've had have gotten incredibly good rain RNG. <laughs> like, just kind of like annoyed that these are the runs. What are you Bible thumping for? So confused. Anyways, this was a fun scenario. I don't have to rare candy. Oh, for the requests to see. Okay, 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 I get it now. Okay, that's where the wings come into play. Okay, okay, I, I got it, I got it. So, <laughs> I have to Master Ball Gyarados, because Gyarados' catch rate's abysmal, even compared to um, Sharpedo. Like, at 50%, it's still like a 40% uh, like chance of capture. So it's not worth it for me to um, try and netball the Gyarados. It's worth it for me to just go ahead and Master Ball it. But that means that I have to Yellow Ball Rayquaza, uh, check my nature and my stats to make sure. I need to have 64 speed to uh, avoid using a second X speed. And unfortunately, um, I don't get that chance because my speed is not great. Um, but I had a really nice attack stat. So I also had to double check. And I think I I I think I'd somehow missed what my attack was. So I like double check again. 
here. Do I double check again to make... Yeah, I do. Uh, to make sure that my attack was greater than 90. Because if it was less than 90, then I would need to go to 6x attacks. So I've figured out that I need 2x speeds and 5x attacks for this fight. So that's the power of pressure, like I don't have to manip for Gyarados, I can just go straight into it. And all I need to do is, like, calc. So that's like the one, the one Pokemon that I no longer manip, or that I don't manip, is Gyarados. And it's because it's just heavily influenced by Absol. So that's cool. Also, I'm male. I wish it was female Gyarados. Female Gyarados is superior. Oh no, I am! That's right. No, 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 I am female Gyarados. Sorry. So, Love Disc can't attract me. <laughs> so, this is like, best case scenario possible. Like, this is, this is like the goldest of gold potentials. <laughs> like, I don't have to evolve. Uh, I just get to go ham. I don't have the candy to evolve. I'm already a Gyarados. I'm already level 35. Nothing... Nothing matters. I just get to go. So yeah. Uh, heal off confusion here, and then... Oh yeah, sorry. Two speeds. Two speeds! Two speeds. And as long as Love This doesn't confuse me this turn. That's the fight. My brain is used... My, my, my brain was used to having to menu to Earthquake there, so I kind of made a a quick flip mistake. But it's fine. Soft Sand boosted Earthquakes. Destroy one. Good fight. Really fun fight. Like, even though I hit an optional, like, this is still like a gold split and a half. I think this is like a two minute gold, almost. So, what was, what was old gold? Like, uh. I oh know, I guess old gold was like 14 minutes. 14.45. So this is still like... Alright, maybe it's a measly gold. Alright, well... It's fine. Uh, Hyper Beam Recharge. Hyper Beam is the only thing that I can do to guarantee one-shot the Kingdra. Like, I guess maybe with this attack set, if I went for plus six, Earthquake might have done the job? I'm not sure. Shoot. Well, that would have been a thing to, like, test. But, I mean, the Crawdon can't do crap to me. Like, a critical crab hammer still does, like, f like maybe 40 HP. <laughs> so he can't do anything. So, yeah. Good split. Yeah, so that was a 30 second gold. Yeah, it was about a 30 second gold. Okay. But, but, but. So, I had... In the previous run, uh, realized early on that I was out of Pokeballs, and I had changed my Rayquaza offsets to the to thinking that I was chucking a Great Ball. In other words, I moved them so that I was throwing two frames earlier than before. What? Oh, <laughs> that was that was a missed input. I was like, why are you candying, Roush? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Don't candy. <laughs> I, I have a plan for this rare candy. This rare candy is going to save me an X speed. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so proud of how this how this end game turned out, though. Um, aside from a few things, but we'll get to them when we get there. Oh yeah, that's another optional. Uh, this one I one shot the first Pokemon, but the second Pokemon's a Tentacruel, and I don't one shot Tentacruel because Tentacruel is a bulky beast. But it is a two shot, so it's fine. Constrict, nah. It's fine. Well, yeah, Earthquake would one-shot, but it's not worth it me switching hard out into Gyarados for a one-shot Earthquake, where I can just two-shot with the Pelipper anyway, and not have Intimidate. Well, I guess it is clear body, doesn't it? But it still has the Intimidate text. It's fine. Nope. Yeah, but I'd have to Hyper Beam. I'd have to Hyper Beam um, Wingle. Because my other move is like, it's Twister. It's like Twister and Leer. So it's not worth it. Like, And I can still run into Wild Encounters with the Garrett. No, maybe I can't. Maybe they're all 35 and blow. Either way, like, having Pelipper in the top spot is still the better idea. Because then I would have Intimidate on this Gyarados, or on the Rayquaza guarantees. It, it loses me a lot of time to not switch out. And I have to fly anyway, so I'm already in the menu. Either way, Rayquaza offsets, my Yolo Ball is off, and I don't know. I didn't know. And bop. I freeze. Do I fix it now or did I try it one more time? Okay, I guess I tried it one more time before fixing it. <laughs> I hope you realize. Never mind. Yes, I didn't realize. How did I fix it? Did I fix the timer? Okay, I must have fixed the timer. Okay, yeah, this is me fixing the timer. And now I reset. What happened? Did I? Oh my gosh, is this what I did? Okay, <laughs> so I completely, like, for some reason, I went to redo my timer, and I think I messed it up entirely. So I reloaded flow timer, changed my offset, and then that's what took so long. I think that's what happened, if I remember. Man, this was, this was a bad sequence. So yeah, I've already lost, like, three minutes to this Rayquaza. <laughs> In other words, all the beautiful time save that Gyarados just gave me, like, also took it all away. 
because otherwise I would have um, Master Ball to Rayquaza and not have to worry about this. Yeah. So now I've fixed my timer. Because even though the catch rate on Rayquaza is essentially the same between a Pokeball and a Great Ball and an Ultra Ball, um, like because it, they have varying like oh yeah no gear gear a time save it works I just like as opposed to catching a magic card like but. The other benefit to not having to rare candy a uh, uh, Gyarados is coming up later. Because like I said, it allows me to save an X speed on a fight. Which, if it had gone absolutely perfectly, I would have been able to do something really cool. But I didn't get lucky. Oh yeah. No, like, pulling off the YOLO first try should be, like, guaranteed. I just didn't real- or I didn't remember that I had messed with my offsets from a previous attempt. So I just need to remember to reset my- reset my stuff before. Something else I need to also remember to reset. <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit, too. So we're like, I need to fix- my Mighty Anna Yolo Ball, my Oddish Yolo Ball, something else. We needed to fix something else. What was it? I think that was it. I think everything else is fine. I just wasn't playing well. My movement was bad. Oh yeah, I forgot to... I need to deposit Gyarados. Because I need to pick up something out of my PC. So I need... Who do I need? Oh, Oddish. Duh. <laughs> Oddish. <laughs> I need my sweet center. <laughs> I keep forgetting that Oddish is in the, is in the box. Hey, for the win. So yeah, and we've, we've already used the, the EXP share. Ah? Okay, fine. Ah, for the win. <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, because I'm the quiet nature and I'm not brave or adamant, I have to fly the Altaria. I can't aerial ace it. That's like the one thing that's different between um, this Rayquaza, the quiet, and the adamant is that I have to fly instead of aerial ace. I mean, other than that, because because it's not getting used against Drake or uh, Glacia, there's no difference. Okay, so... Let's see what we are going to discuss for huge the legendary a was that huge was huge that first gym fight some streams ago wait which one huge that, that first gym fight some streams ago Roxanne which what did it do with the Geodudes? Did it just... Geodudes. I guess I'm, I'm not remembering. Kill them all. Alone. Well, yeah. I mean... It's kind of what it's supposed to be doing. <laughs> if it's not doing that, then we, we got problems. Yeah, if I don't...
But the sleeps? What do you mean the sleeps? What? What sleeps? I'm so confused. I... I've done so many runs of this, like, I don't know which one you're referring to. <laughs> I've done so many attempts on Roxanne that I, I don't know what you're on about. Anyways, we're... What? No. I mean... Maybe... Maybe it put Nose Pass to sleep, but not, like... Not that it mattered. Like, I... It, it's got effect spore, not sleep powder. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're, what you're confusing. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're confusing. The, the, the shroomish is like, is doing what it was supposed to do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're on about. All right, anyways, uh, I am getting ready to do the final three. Frame perfect manips. I need a Laren. I need a Mawile. And I need a Hariyama. This. this. I'm already like. I need to first try all of these. Because the Rayquaza debacle, I need to first try them. And actually, so wait. Missing a Rayquaza YOLO ball wastes like 50 seconds. No. Yeah, like 50 seconds, right? Something like that. Do I have the Rayquaza offsets? I don't. It wastes like 50 seconds, so we've lost. We lost like two and a half minutes to Rayquaza at this point. Man, that actually hurts thinking about it. Huh. Well, shucks. Alright, anyways. So, uh, Laren is a very early encounter. Why did I put my Mawile offsets in here? It's like 18 seconds to encounter. And it's very interesting because the IVs on it are not good. The IVs are not good. But it has two very positive attributes. That gold bat is I don't remember if that's early or late. But the the Laren has two good attributes. One, it's a high level. And as I've mentioned or as I mentioned earlier in the stream, level plays a pretty significant factor in the damage calculating formula. And it also has the Rockhead ability. Now, all of the Larens and Agrons that I have done used in previous attempts have um, Sturdy. Double Edge is a move that I need to use. <laughs> In order to KO uh, Kingdra, Drake's Kingdra. Here's my Laren. Yeah, so I got it. No, what? How many times did I fail this? Holy mackerel. Wow. For some reason, I thought I got it like second try. Ooh. That's not good. And I think I've gotten a different Pokemon each time. This is... That's not good. Hmm, maybe I need to double check my Laren offsets too. There should be no trainers loaded right now. That's why I'm here on this island. Wow. Huh. I failed this a ton. I need to double check my offsets then for Laren. That's not good. Now do I get it? Okay, now I got it. Okay, yeah. So, it's level 44, and it's got Sturdy. It is a lonely nature, 9 HP, 9 attack, 
5 defense, 2 special attack, 25 special defense, which doesn't matter at all, and 23 speed. It's so close to perfection, yet it's just barely off. <laughs> it literally, like, any plus attack nature, as long as it's more than, I think it was 5 attack IVs, was like the minimum that I need for Salamence and Kingdra. But... It needs 24 speed IVs in order for me to save an X speed on Drake. However, remember that part where I said I have a spare candy from not having to use it on Magikarp? I get to skip the X speed. <laughs> so, it's just kind of funny how that turned out. Alright, so now I'm going for Mawile. I mean, you know, it's plus minus, you know. I get to save more time avoiding the X speed than using it. So Mawile, the encounter is at the 34th second. It's uh, 33.8 seconds in from soft reset and it takes a minute with the yellow ball and we second try it also level 44 uh, this maw while is like the antithesis of the Laren this maw while is so incredibly precise the only thing i wish is uh for it to have a little more special defense but it's 23 hp 30 attack 26 defense 29 special attack 5 special defense and 25 speed with a hasty nature now for the purposes that be it's actually better for me to have a mawile with um, more speed than attack. Like, the hasty nature is incredibly like, necessary. <laughs> I, I, it's, it, <laughs> so, Yo, that would be sick. That would be sick if Aerodactyl... Even just Brave Bird. Forget Head Smash. Brave Bird would be incredible on it. That would make it a very useful Pokemon. That might even make, like, regular Aerodactyl better than um, Megadactyl. Anyways, back to Mawile and um, Sydney. Sydney will use Roar if you set up to plus... Or set up five times on it. It does not like you staying in and setting up for forever. Also, I'm trying to get a level 42 Hariyama. <laughs> With uh, three different level 40 female Hariyamas surrounding the frame. So, this is it. Hariyama is just. Hariyama is not the MVP. Hariyama is. Oh, I've tried, tried so hard to figure out a better way around this. But basically, Ma Wild ruined Hariyama. And let me explain why. <clears throat> if Hariyama could get away with just using Brick Break, that would be great. I could have, like, a literal five frame window for Hariyama that would work. Like, all of these. Like, all of these Hariyamas would work. But. Uh, because of. I need to teach Brick Break to Mawile to defeat Sydney. I need Hidden Power Fighting. <laughs> so, I have frame 2024? No, 2022 and 2026. 
have the exact same PID. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just resetting. However, um, I created my Hariyama offsets with a point in mind that um, there were two spinners on screen. I currently have both of them despawned. So they're not affecting my RNG. Like like they normally would. And uh that actually is affecting the fact that my offsets are wrong. And uh that comes into play. <laughs> that comes into play. So now I'm like sort of guessing where I'm at because I don't know where I am exactly. So I'm just like this is this is such a struggle. I'm like I'm so disappointed. This run should have been amazing. I had four minutes of potential time saved. If I had even saved like half of it, like this would have been this would have been the run that I was looking for. Even though like I died to Norman because of stupid reason, this was gonna be great. But <clears throat> Do I get it this time? No, I don't. Jeez. Oh, man. This is just... It's painful to watch this over and over and over again. I want to talk about Mawile again. So Mawile gets three attack and one speed. And is able to outspeed all of Sydney's Pokemon. And kill them all with Brick Break. After one... Oh, yeah. No, I definitely learned a few things for next time. Um, but unfortunately, I also learned a few more things just watching it back that I than I wanted to, and now I might have to do like a complete reroute, and I don't like that because that would be a much better strategy. Sableye would be better than Absol, <laughs> so I'm beside myself. Anyways, Mawile. Um, Mawile is just about as genetically perfect as it can be. <laughs> and it, it literally needed to be perfect. And the fact that it's actually an earlier frame than one of the Mawiles that I was trying earlier with the lonely nature, because I thought I needed more attack. But it turns out that there was one that was like, I don't know, it was like 250 frames earlier that got the entire job done better and had better survivability so it was just like so much better it was like cool this small while works all right i think this is the one where i get it so yeah now i'm bleeding time blood time to Rayquaza, blood time to laren blood time to mawile only a little bit on Mawile, though. A lot more on Laren. And then Bled, like, I don't know, where are we at? Like, six and a half minutes on Hariyama? So six and a half minutes on Hariyama, three minutes on Rayquaza. This entire sequence is just bleh. So yeah, here's my Hariyama. That's the one that I'm looking for. Hidden Power, base 57. Fighting. Oh, and my YOLO balls failed. Okay, that's right. Yeah, so this is not the Hariyama that my offsets were originally calibrated for. This is the 2026 framer. So my YOLO balls were completely off the mark. So just like that entire sequence was not fun. Yeah, like I estimated trying to hit frames later, so... F because I thought, okay, now my my sub 4 is very gone, and I thought my PB was also going to start to fade away, because my, um, my other PB, I thought, had a tremendously nearly perfect Elite 4. So I was like, well, F everything, rip. This is not working. We're just going to go ahead and finish this out.
Actually, I, no, I, I think I was still thinking I could PB here. Yeah, I was like, I could PB, but it's not going to be nearly as good as I, I want it to be. But yeah, the, I'm going to have the world's greatest time save. If I just calibrate my offsets correctly for next run. Like between this and the Sand Shrew and like confidence in the Pelipper Minute. So I don't think I need to change it because it like hadn't failed me in so long. I think I just need the confidence to execute it. But the cool thing, yeah, I, I double checked because I was like, I need to make sure that this is the correct Hariyama, that I didn't just randomly hit another one. Fun fact, it's got 30 attack EVs. It definitely doesn't need them, but... Alright, so I need Mawile in the top slot. I like froze because I wanted to make sure that I was I was doing the right menuing because I was like again I was like shook at this point. All right, so I have three candies. I'm gonna use two on the uh, Laren into Agron, and uh, we'll go ahead and evolve. And then the last candy is going to go to the Mawa. Cry skip. And then brick break to Mawa. Cry skip. Wow, I got both cry skips? Oh, that's Pog. Oh, that is Pog. Shoot, I didn't... I didn't even know that. <laughs> and then I promptly threw it by <laughs> trying to fly to Moss Deep on accident. <laughs> that's just force of habit. My muscle memory is telling me, hey, when you're in Stutopolis, you always have to fly to Moss Deep. After you've beaten one. Yep. Full restore is incredibly important. I need him for Hariyama especially. Right. What a time loss. What a time loss. For this fight, all I need to win is for Mightyena to, well, A, not crit, and B, use Sand Attack once. Or twice. Sorry, I needed to use it twice. One. And now the fight's over. I outspeed everything. No priority. Brick break just one shots.
Also, I guess Crunch can lower special defense. So that is a thing. Like, there's there's a few things that can go wrong in the fight. This is the unfortunate side effect of me leveling Mawile so far, is I have to say no to Spit Up Swallow and Stockpile. But, a small price to pay for a much easier fight. A small price to pay for a much easier fight. And it turns out that that was a gold. <laughs> so, I had no clue. I was like, wow, that was a really good split. This is the most straightforward fight of them all. Because, again, Protect City. 4x attacks, 1x speed, Swords Dance, Shadow Ball, everything else. So the only thing that needs to happen, well, I mean, it doesn't really matter, because I can I can stall out if Sableye decides to be a jackhammer. I, I can bite Flinch. Um, Nightshade is just the best thing that I could go for. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I was, like, kind of flailing. Uh, Glacia. Uh, I had <clears throat> an idea for this fight, and I wrote it down. And then I decided to do the riskier route. And by riskier, I mean, like, potential to save a lot of time, but also the potential to lose, like, way much more. Like, a greater potential of losing more. So, the idea is to belly drum heal after the first turn, then get the second speed off, and if I don't get on cord this, uh, this coming turn or this turn,
then I can just go ahead and win, and it'd be a huge gold. Unfortunately, I get Encore. So now I have to ride out the Encore. I can't remember if I tried to do that without healing. Okay, I didn't. So yeah, now I have to ride out the Encore. Now, what I could do on the alternative is be attacking, or belly drum on this turn. So I would go X speed, X speed, heal, 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 then belly drum on the hail turn and be able to just win. Where I'm guaranteed to not get like knocked into Encore. And the only thing that could potentially happen is uh, be paralyzed. <laughs> and then like stall it out. But it's a lot less likely than trying to play for the Encore. Because I think her AI is guaranteed to Encore that turn. So now I have to risk getting back to Encore again. Because I have to heal the Paralysis. But it's fine. It worked out. We're ready to go. So, I mean... Kind of a slow fight, but either form is going to be kind of slow. I think I lose like 20 seconds here. I can't remember. Oh no, I didn't lose 20 seconds here. What? How was that time so good? What? Shoot. Man, I should be able to gold that split. Alright, well, whatever. Shucks. Be in a much better position. Alright, anyways, Drake time. <laughs> so, Sir Aaron Bang, equipped with its now no longer in a speed tie with Salamence. <laughs> at plus two, gets to just go in. So uh, I'll explain what I'm trying to go for. I have the potential to save an X attack too on this fight. So uh, I have to guard spec against um, potential rock tombs. I can't afford to have my speed lowered, otherwise it just makes the fight longer. So, if I am able to attack Shelgon, the first turn that my guard spec is active, then I can have the guard spec up until Salamence comes out, and I get to block its Intimidate. And I can only do this if I can save an another X item. So if I can save the speed, I can save the attack. And go to plus 5 attack as opposed to plus 6. So guard spec wears out this turn. I'm at plus 5. So I set the guard spec up this turn. And I'm going to go ahead and, and attempt to attack the Shelgon praying that it decides to attack me. But it protects. So now I am forced to go for the other uh, X attack to guarantee kill the Salamence, because I can only kill the Salamence at plus 5. I can't do it at plus 4, because my attack is so low. My IV is so low. But yeah, so that was kind of a an interesting risky strategy. I mean, it didn't really hurt, per se, but it also didn't really pay off, either. 
I still think I didn't lose time. Did I lose time in the split? Maybe I did. But it wasn't much. So yeah, once the Kingdra's gone, I get to Iron Tail everything else. Yeah, at this point, I was also like, this is going to be a PB, but I'm also not going to hit my goal. So I'm just going to try new things. I'm just going to try a couple of things to see how they work. Because like I knew the theories behind it, but I wanted to see it work in action. It would have been fun if I had gotten that to work in action. Oh, there was a gold. So yeah, so I was just like mildly interested. I hate this fight. I hate this fight so much. I hate that I'm going to have to compare to it. That's not a... I mean, I... I don't know, I've always thought of it more as a sea serpent than a dragon. But I guess I can see where you're coming from. I have to compare to this fight. <laughs> I have to compare to this fight! <laughs> so normally, um... It's the, the strat is to X-Attack, Fly, Aerial Ace, and then Fly the Melodic. But if I get a Blizz Miss the first turn, or Rain Dance, I get to set up the second X-Attack. <laughs> And be able to go for aerial aces, so it saves a turn. A fly turn on melodic, and to potential miss on both melodic and. But yeah, so what happens if, you, if your Rayquaza doesn't get hit? <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> like, at all, at all. <laughs> Why do I have to compare to this fight? <laughs> Ugh. If I was adamant, I'd get to outspeed Gyarados that turn, but... Because I'm quiet, I'm slower. And a three turn outrage. I have to compare to this. Why is this the. <laughs> this is a run that was, had so much potential to be absolutely bonkers. And yet, I managed to flub it so many times. I flubbed it on the team build, I flubbed it on. Um, Pelipper, I flubbed it at Norman, I flubbed it at um, Mighty Anna, I flubbed it on, actually I guess there wasn't too much else, but the battles other than, other than the, the, the Norman battle loss, all of the battles went in super hard. Like, I used, what, three? Oh, yeah, Rayquaza. Thank you. 
That was the other one. Yeah. I mean, just team build in general. The Hariyama, the Laren, and the Rayquaza, especially. Like, this run was so... Also, I get a free gold split here, because um, my previous PB um, had a full party of six because I needed an Oddish Sack. I needed the Oddish Sack to get the Mawile in because it was an Intimidate Mawile. But because it's Hypercutter Mawile, I don't need the Sack. So I get a free four second time save here. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the way the music goes. I thought the Elite Four in my other PB was freaking bonkers. Yes, it will. And it turns out, no. Not bonkers enough. <laughs> I can make that Drake's, the, the Drake fight quicker if I don't try and do the, the yellow thing. Um... Actually, I guess it'll make it it'll make it about the same length, wouldn't it? Because I'd X speed instead of like playing around protect. So all I need to do is get lucky with the protect on the turn that I'm attacking, and then that would be like the same. No, maybe I don't know. Anyways, good Drake fight, <laughs> bonkers Wallace. Um, yeah, I think the yellow is worth it in that scenario, but in order to get that scenario, I need to find the, I need to catch Gyarados as opposed to Magikarp. Like, that's the only way that, that I do that, because I also considered, um, so... It's kind of a weird scenario, but Drake does 85 max to Agron with a flamethrower, and it doesn't have Earthquake. So, I can potentially, like, go for the speed tie if I have, like, that much health remaining, which I should. It's like... There's no way that, um, I mean, unless it goes for frickin', um, Dragon Breath, that... Um, Shell Gun should be doing that much to me. So it's, it's kind of a weird-ish scenario. Like, it's possible that I could do that. Oh yeah, no, 350 is possible. 350 is possible. I wouldn't say probable, but maybe with the new reroute, it's more doable. Um, so what I was considering throughout the course of the run was rerouting um, in Sableye as opposed to Absol, and that would enable me to skip having to grab um shadow ball but then i need to figure out if the exp loss from not fighting um that hariyama and that rhyhorn so like there's a little bit of rerouting but i think it's possible so anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's your new world record, um, 403. I, it might be a 403.11 or a 403.12. I think I, I split late, so I'd have to go through and do the retimer. Um, but yeah.